The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our uh, little ghost story of a mini series for Old Gods of Appalachia. I am Ravnos Archon. My name is Will. I'll be your storyteller for this journey. And before I set the scene, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves and give a little sentence describing their character as uh, we're all. I think this is a first for everyone in the Cypher system, isn't it? It is. Hi, everybody. I am Mama McStabber, and I will be playing Prudence Ann Palmer. Some call her Granny Prudence. She's a superstitious sage that fears no haints. Lives out in an old homestead on the edge of the woods. Uh, my name is uh, Timber Brad. Uh, I will be playing Joseph Georgie Holtzman, a uh sorry a stout protector who walks these woods and he spends most of his free time in in or around the woods um but comes into town every now and then his family is a lumbering family and yeah shalom i am ben uh, i am red ben powers on the socials uh, I'll be playing Randolph Rand Barrow of the Barrow family. Uh, I am a sharp-eyed author who cannot escape the darkness. Uh, Rand uh, grew up in New England. Uh, his family, however, is from the area, and upon the death of his parents, he has traveled to the Appalachia region in an effort to find out more about his roots and where he came from, as well as the dark secret that affects his family. Hey, everybody. I'm uh, Shanky McStabber. Uh, you all know me around here. Uh, I'm actually tonight playing Joe, a.k.a. Old Joe, a.k.a. Joe from the Feed Store. He's a uh, shifty speaker who becomes the beast. And I'd like to tell you more about who I am, but I don't remember. Perfect. <laughs> so uh, with it being a new system for a few of us, um, once we come into a situation where the rules need to be touched on, we will touch them uh, with all appropriate um, consent, of course. Uh, but uh, this is a new system for, I think, the entire table. So bear with us uh, as we set the scene for an 1800s story. It has been just over a decade and less than 100 miles since General Lee made his last stand in Appomattox, Virginia. And if you was heading in from Richmond, it might be awfully convenient to sit a spell in Appomattox since it's halfway between the massive monster of a city and the rising star of the southern charm that is Salem, Virginia, in the heart of Roanoke County. And though Salem sits at a fraction of the manpower that thrives in the capital, it has no less splendor. Why, to the west, there is the remnant of Fort Lewis, 
and it is said that it is the home of a haint or two. Depending on the night, of course, uh, some nights you'll see more than others. I lost myself. There it is. <clears throat> now, Salem is home to almost a new college. What has been the Virginia College Collegiate Institute, a prep school for boys that has been given a college charter and has been renamed Roanoke College on account of the majestic valley that it sits in. Uh, in a few years, it will be home to an all-women's college, but we ourselves were not there yet. Our story begins as the ripples of the American Civil War are just starting to calm on the lake of history. And though the war did not see many casualties on the steps of this little jewel of the valley, the railroad lines, the city depots, some barns and some farmsteads, a couple of storehouses and some non-essential supplies and more than one, but less than a hundred horses were lost in the Union assaults. The people of the valley have been and still are a hardy set of folk. And I dare anyone to find a tougher than nails set of people. Now, for their part, even though Virginia seceded from the Union, Salem was among the first to come out of the Reconstruction era with its people in mind. They worked hard to fix the roads. They worked hard to fix the rails. And they worked hard at modernizing the city. They'll bring in electricity and telephone lines and even public utilities and waterworks. Now, that's not to say that Salem is blessed, not by any stretch of the good Lord's work. The city is set to face some hardships. But those stories exist over yonder on another table with another group and maybe even another story shaper that isn't yours truly. See, our story starts small. With so much green around you, sometimes it's easy to forget that the green has its own wants and its own needs and its own way of bringing people into the fold. Because out here, out beyond the science of the city life, there are words for electricity and magnetism and steam power, old words, whispered words that carry a little bit more than just the letters attached to each other. Out here, we got to watch out for ourselves and for each other. Dogs barking in the middle of the night might not be dogs at all. That child on the edge of your property shyly waving at you in the sliver of light coming down from a crescent moon might not be a child at all. And you ain't but barely turned around to grab your coat off the hook before you see nothing where that child was just a moment ago. And maybe those tall tales you've heard down at the general store about the witchy woman they call Granny might have some truth to them. Maybe. And there's no shortage of stories about things in the woods. And maybe there might be could something out there. And maybe that was just your mind playing games on you on account of how tired you've been. And maybe that's all it is. Maybe. Our story sees us opening on Salem, Virginia. It is the year of our Lord, 1879. The population is nearing 1,700 souls. And it is showing no sign of stopping. To the Northeast, a grand plan for a plantation has been in flux for some time as folk are trying to bend the land to their will to become the city of Roanoke, Virginia. But they're not there yet. They're not even at a thousand souls, barely breaking the third of what Salem has. And although long silent has the cannon fire, the rifle fire, and the inner fire of some people ceased, some crackles echo louder than others. Some roars devastate the land and some sputtering and sizzling popping devastate the flesh still. But what is what has become of silent envers that devastate the soul that put someone in such a rage? Can one ever forget that kind of inferno? 
There are some who run from the fire. There are some who run into the flame. And there are some who watch, mesmerized by the natural or unnatural, depending on who you ask, forces that tug on the ancestral awe or terror or bliss, that primordial fear that taught us to run, that self-preservation above all else is what keeps us going. Fight or flight, stand or run, dig or burn, we are all ash in the end. The Confederate Army uniform has stood as a symbol of oppression. The long drab gray coat hanging like a ghost on the torso of the boys that would never return to their mamas. Long have the blue slacks of their britches marched through the slog of marshes and compassion alike. They say men fight wars while boys pay the cost of it all. And one such man was recently found dead in his home. Reginald, Reginald Howard Fulton, the once prominent lieutenant, lost his wife during the birth of their second child, Matthew. And shortly before her due date, the family lost their firstborn daughter, Bianca. This man, in the span of a month, lost everything that was dear to him. The family property is in the southwestern edge of the commercial line where incorporated Salem ends. One has simply to follow the direction of Shanks Alley until right about the American mining and offices of registered rails line cuts through the southern portion of the city like a hammock. We're opening up in Salem, Virginia, what is home to some people, what is new to others, and what some have tried to forget. We see ourselves landing, the camera settling at the Williams Brown house and store as we open our ghost story. The youngest of the city deputies, Ronald McMillan, has begun his initial round of questioning folks, eager, bushy-tailed, bright-eyed, and though he wants to do good by his hometown, he also has a lot of learning to do still about the giving and taking of information. Ronnie's a little excited, a little too excited, one could say, about the scenario in particular. Sheriff Pearson has asked his deputies to round up suspects because there's going to be an old-fashioned ordeal of blood called because something does not sit right with what's happened to old Lieutenant Fulton. And superstitions aside, what could possibly go wrong with an old-fashioned or ordeal of blood? But like I said, we see ourselves coming in through one of the open windows. It is a crisp October morning, Monday, to be precise. It is the waxing crescent moon as we are coming towards a full moon on Halloween. Oh, Hallow's Eve next week. And we see a couple of faces that we're familiar with as far as Virginia is concerned. Oh, Joe works at the Williams and Brown house and store, doesn't he? Yeah. Something to do. How does old Joe feel about Ronnie? Yeah. He ever strung you the wrong way? No, he... All right. You know, anything lets me go do my thing, you know? Was old Joe happy <clears throat> about hearing about Ronnie's engagement to Miss uh, Sorsha Guthrie. You know, maybe for a minute. But eventually, it turned to ashes anyway. Okay. There's nobody in Joe's life, right? No, it it's hard to have somebody in your life when you don't even know who you are anymore. That's the thing about past you try to forget. You don't know what you were forgetting, so you don't know what you actually lost. Yeah, a lot of people try to forget their past. In my case, 
somehow I managed to do it. Ronnie pulls you aside. I'll, I know that you, you ain't, you ain't got nothing to worry about, Joe. Uh, but I got to ask, you know, Pearson's, Pearson's a hard ass about that. Uh, do you see anything with over at the Fulton estate? Were you, were you in the area? Look, you know, I get off work here. I go out in the woods. I don't go that way. Yeah, I'm no. doing that. I know. I know. But if somebody here sees me not doing my due diligence. I get um, you. I get you. I, I know. I don't blame you for asking. I would ask me too. Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time you saw the, the old, the old war dog? If you don't mind me asking. You know, I think. That week. Brought some stuff up to him. You remember how he looked? No, no, not really. I was focused on unloading the, the cart. That was that was what I was up there for. Yeah, yeah. It don't do no good for me to be looking. That just makes people uncomfortable. So rather than make them uncomfortable, I just unload it and do my thing and leave. I get you. I understand. You know, I... I Better with the working man around here that farmer wants me help him load up. I talk all night with them. Did you get you any of that that white lightning the last time they come through? I did not. Oh. I did not even know they, they brought some. Uh, I'll let Samuel know. Next time Farmer Samuel comes through, I'll tell him to drop you off a jug. Yeah, make, make sure that Pearson's not around, though. You see him kind of Look you around know how that sure works. Here. That's okay. He's a, he's uppity about that kind of thing, you know. Hey, I, I got favors. He, he, he'll make sure he does it quiet. The bell at the door dings. Who's coming into the store? Who needs something this morning? Uh, I imagine Georgie's coming in, grabbing stuff for the for breakfast for Ma. And you'll see that there's a few people kind of gathered around at the counter. Um, the old home is huge. The whole first floor has been dedicated to this store and goods. Um, the Williams and Brown family have been in the area for a time, and the upstairs is the living quarters and whatnot. Uh, and even though the kitchen is kind of communal, people know to ask and whatnot. Uh, but you notice that one of their employees, old Joe, is over by the stove talking to the youngest and newest deputy in the city, barely even six months on the job. Um, the Ronald McMillan. Um, do you have any interactions with Ronald? Have, was he a friend of your brother's? I may have seen him in passing, but I kind of always kept to myself, which has become easier now that I'm the only one left. Yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, Miss Guthrie settled for Ronnie? Was she attached to any of your brothers? I don't like to speculate, but... Sure. Who does? It's, it is certainly possible. But that'd be telling some that ain't my business. Of course. And the older woman behind the counter smiles as she sees you walk in. Oh, Georgie, I was wondering if you were going to come in this morning. How's your mama now? As good as always, you know, considering. 
Well, just picking up the the morning groceries for I'm off for the day in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you got us down for for that shipment of, of, of firewood, right? Yes, ma'am. Excellent. First on my list this evening. Excellent, excellent. Uh, you want any breakfast? Have you eaten, hun? Oh, that's why I'm here. I'm grabbing stuff for Ma, and then I'm heading back. Lickety split. Hey, Georgie, right. if you need to grab a bite while I get your stuff, just hand me the list. You sure, Joe? That's what I'm here for. Give me the list. I'll, I'll go pull it off for you. Much appreciated. No hand in the list. Yeah. I'm going to uh, go back and Ronnie, start pulling stuff. Yeah, Ronnie takes advantage of it. Uh, George, do you, do you mind if I if I take a moment of your time? Uh, you you could eat on this biscuit here, and he kind of opens the, the little warming area of the, the old stove and pull, and you can see that there's about six biscuits sitting there. I do love me a fresh biscuit. They're good. There's, some, there's some apple butter, too, if you want. Well, I do suppose, now that old Joe is freed my immediate time, I'll gladly take a biscuit. What can I help you with? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the old man over uh, on the south side of town, uh, an old Lieutenant Fulton from the war. Um we found him in a in a state. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the man's life was taken from him. Pearson Sheriff Pearson believes uh, foul play is in order. Um, I know that some people get to talking, and people are talking about an ordeal of blood taking place. I I've only ever heard of them. I've never even seen what that is. Uh, but I gotta ask everybody where they were the last couple nights. Um, you don't mind if I, if I poke a prod, do you? I ain't got nothing to hide. Um, you mind telling me where you was uh, the last couple nights then? Same place I always is. In the woods, doing my job. And then reading my book. Whittling. Anybody see you going out into the forest, into the woods? I mean, I don't cut trees by myself. I'm sure plenty of people saw me. All right, so you you was out there working then, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's what I just said. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. Is this apple butter gone bad? I hope not. I had me three biscuits already. You think it tastes funny? No, I'm just making sure you're all right. You had more than I have. Um, listen, between you and me, Georgie, I, I don't want to ask people these questions, but Sheriff Pearson wants to get a, a group of, of people, make a show out of it, you know. Oh, but, I'm not faulting you for asking. I'm all right, just, all right. I, yeah, I just, I just you know. don't want there to be bad blood between us, you know, what with, with Sorsha and, and, and me getting hitched and all that. And, It is what it is, you know, can't, can't expect a woman like that to waste all her good years, you know, everything that's happened. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I was always sweet on her, you know, uh, I just want to make sure that we're square. Yeah, we'll be fine. All right, all right. Did you see anything strange last couple of nights? Uh, Boy, ain't that a loaded question? Who don't see anything strange in the woods? I mean, I don't. I don't particularly like to spend a lot of time in the forest, in Georgia. I'll be honest. So, whoa, whoa, whoa! You starting to talk like them Yanks? The forest? It's the woods. I'm. I. I understand. Oh, uh, you know, I just. For Pearson's on my ass about 
making sure we we start using the standard uh, practices and the laws in the big city. So I gotta I gotta start getting used to calling it the forest. Says who? But I don't Pearson, think that, I just told you get the apple butter I, out your ears. I don't think the law says anything about forest versus woods. That don't change what they are. I'm, but I mean, anyway, no, they're still scary. I guess maybe I'm just used to it and just spend so much time there. But you didn't see anything strange out by Shanks? Nothing. I mean, I don't know that I've been out that way, but. No, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything where I was. Haven't heard anything. Mm -hmm. And the little bell above the door will ring again. Who's the new person that we get to see? It is going to be Prudence. Mm -hmm. Now Fine. she, she, she sent, she sent Clara Ruth apples. off to school. <laughs> and now she's bringing her cart in where she's brought eggs for the store. Mm. <laughs> And you've got you've got a donkey. Yes, I do. Right? Mm -hmm. what, I have a donkey. What's the donkey's car. name? Nelly. Nelly. Mm -hmm. Adorable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so the older woman will see you from behind the counter, uh, and you can see that there's a little gaggle of uh, the auxiliary group. Uh, of women talking and uh -huh. pointing over at Ronnie and little Georgie uh, by the stove. Um, Georgie's about done with a biscuit. Uh, and you can see that Ronnie's bending over and grabbing one out of the warming tray. Um, the way he's handling it's definitely not his first biscuit. <laughs> What is the woman that runs the counter? His name? I'll tell you right now. Uh, that is Constance. As Prudence walks in, she walks up to the counter and the gaggle of women that are ogling the, the younger gentlemen in yeah. the kitchen. Um, and they get quieter the moment that you come up to the counter. Of course, of course. And she's got her bag with her and she said. Constance, I brought the eggs. You can get Joe to get them from the cart. Um, yeah. Um, also, and she takes a jar, <laughs> it's a mason jar, out of her bag. Here's the sab for Stuart. Oh, bless you. It'll He's help his niece. Love this. He has been complaining all weekend long. Yeah. I knew it had been a minute since I last gave you any, so I figured he might need some more. Uh, definitely. He, uh, old fool went and tried dancing last night at the, the revelry over at the church and he just <laughs> locked backwards like an old mule. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the Thinks men folk, the men folk think they're is. young forever. <laughs> yeah. Idiot man. That's what they are. And ladies, how you doing? And they all smile and nod at you. Uh, and Constance does her best to always try to include you. She slides over. Now, you, all of you know Miss Prudence, yes? Uh, and some will nod. One of them just kind of like stares, uh, trying not to stare, but she's just, she's heard, it's very clear that she's heard stories. I'll see you in church this Sunday, won't I, Susan? Of course. Of course. Always. Always sitting right up front mm -hmm. where, where the Lord can see me best. Of course. Oh. Must show yeah. off how much we love him. Those who love best love most. Exactly. That's what I say. And I agree. Oh. And Ronnie just kind of grabs the fourth biscuit uh, out of the tray, slides it back. Uh, don't go anywhere. Anyway, Georgie, I want to I want to see Ms. Prudence has seen anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to wait for old Joe to come with the groceries before I can go anywhere anyway. But go easy on them biscuits. Your oh. uniform ain't going to fit. And what's what's your boss going to say then? 
oh, this is this isn't for me. This is for this is for, for Pearson. And you see him grab a napkin and then just stuff the biscuit in his pocket. Uh, Pearson, the mouse you got in your pocket. <laughs> and he stops I'll see for a you moment. later, Ronnie. Yeah, he stops for a moment. And he's just like, no, Pearson, the sheriff, Pearson. Damn. You know, people can have the same name. As mice? <laughs> this is anything. That don't make Georgie's, sense. Georgie's a bit thick sometimes, so... Yeah, no, Ronnie's thick too. So <laughs> this, this doesn't help. <laughs> uh, but he comes over as uh, as the ladies are about to uh, say something. And he's like, uh, Miss... Miss... Uh, Miss Palmer, uh, if I if I could if I could um, just bother you for for a moment. Uh, now, Ronnie, you never bother me. Uh, I, I appreciate that, uh, Sheriff Pearson. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, uh, but old Lieutenant Fulton was found dead in his in his house. Was he uh, now? We were uh, we're doing an investigation. Miss Sheriff Pearson wants all of his deputies to to find out. What people have seen and if anything strange has been going on, uh, and he looks around and he kind of uh, steps between you and the ladies, uh, and, and people talk about your your territory and, and being out close to the woods. Uh, did you see anything strange? You know, Mister Fulton at all, Lieutenant Fulton? Oh, now I've been in this area for a mighty long time. So has my family. Right, right, I right. know every damn family that lives in this place. Yeah, and she looks right. at the women. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know Lieutenant Fulton, the widower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, did he come by? Did he visit you at all? Did, did you, will you have? I ain't seen him in a good week. How long ago he passed? We think it, it might have been the last couple nights. Uh, oh, goodness. I mean, I'll admit, he won't week. looking so good. That's what people saying, that after what happened to his wife, that he just tore the rug right off from under him. Uh, yeah. I saw him in passing as I was making my way home after dropping off some things that people needed. And he just didn't look good. He looked despondent. That... Um, I'm gonna need you to spell that for me, Miss. Miss. Certainly, it is D E S P O N D E N T. Despondent, right. like like That's his life won't nothing but storms and rain. Oh, you should have said that. Oh, that I can understand. I understand, Ronnie. I, I I'll try to speak to your level. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Oh. The Sheriff Pearson wants us to to start reading more, and I got to be honest, there, there's there's a lot of words that I'm that I'm learning very slowly. Uh, you that, should come by. Clara could help you with that. Like teaching you to read. She's oh, real good at it. I was I was about to say, man, Miss Palmer, I am a spoken man. Oh no no no! I ain't talking about that. Your wife should satisfy those needs just fine. No, she ain't my wife yet, but well, fingers crossed. You got engaged. She might as well be your wife. That's what I keep telling people. <laughs> but she'll take care of you fine. But no, as far as learning your letters and and how to read them well, Claire's real good at that. I think she's gonna go off to that school and become a teacher now that that sounds like a mighty fine life plan for her mm -hmm. uh, she's been talking about it she's been helping the youngins at the school with their letters she uh is she is she the one helping out over at the at the colored school yeah that's nice of her she got good heart yeah yeah uh, so about, about Lieutenant Fulton, Ms. Palmer, did, did you notice anything strange around his territory? Uh, I know that he's out he's, over there by Shanks. Yeah, he, he's, 
a little ways away. Um, I don't yeah. go by there all that often. But I, like I said, I saw him in passing about a week ago, and he just didn't look good. I hmm. hollered to him, and he looked, and he just looked and didn't even say nothing and just wandered on. Ah, uh, see. So. Miss Palmer, do you know anything about uh, Sheriff Pearson has uh, this notion in his mind that he wants to go through an ordeal of blood? I ain't never heard anything about that, uh, but you've been here for a while. Uh, is that is that a thing that used to happen here? Is there something I can roll for that or Ooh. or do I just uh -huh. happen to know this? <laughs> I mean, let me take a look at your skills. All right. Uh, I, ha I have intellect. <laughs> you do have some. You do have some. Oh, that's a big thing. Now, that don't mean not about much nothing. We all got intellect. <laughs> Georgia don't. Georgia got, Georgia's suffering in the intellect department. Um, I think if you want to roll your understanding, you can. Okay. Um, And I'll say it's a... It, it would have been a difficulty three for you. So that gets eased because you're trained. Yeah. Uh, so that'll make it a difficulty two. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So go ahead and roll a d20. It right. makes uh, it a target of six. Target of six. Yeah. For those that don't know, the difficulty Ooh, times three. I got me an eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ordeal of blood uh, is an old tradition. Mm -hmm. Uh goes back a ways as far as um, the superstitious folk believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all, it, there's no science to it whatsoever. Um, of course what not. Is, there ain't science to a lot of things that happens out here. Nope. Um, <laughs> and what it is, is that people believe that when a corpse is laid out and the story of its crime is related to witnesses that uh, if the offending party, the guilty party, touches the corpse, it will begin to bleed from one of its orifices, thus showing the gathered masses the guilt of its killer. Like I said, there's no science behind it whatsoever it's all superstition well now ronnie <laughs> why are you going around saying that in public is it bad <laughs> that is old magic oh that, there's no magic miss palmer that's all superstitious folks how do you think you got your girl and she just winks at him. <laughs> I, I thought it was my smile. Mm hmm. <laughs> it was Maybe that it was and a few biscuits. other things. <laughs> <laughs> it's that apple. It's that apple butter smell coming out of his mouth. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he he kind of scratches his head and he tells oh, that I didn't. I mean, like I said, I've never heard of this ordeal of blood before. No, I mean, that's that's old stuff. That stuff. My mama told me stories of that when I was tiny. Oh, that it I, used to happen when she was tiny. That, those, so these these are things that that used to happen. Yeah, the the ordeal of blood. But you're saying it's a bad thing. It's well, now it it ain't. You know how people talk about me and my family, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, of course, it's looked down upon because well, it ain't, yeah. you know, what the church says. But it's the ordeal of blood is to show who's guilty of the murder. But that's a good thing then because it, it lets us know who did the thing. Yeah, but it can't be used as evidence in court. What? How does what? How does that work? Because and what it is, it's a. It, it, and he and she takes him walking around the store out of earshot of everybody <laughs> else because he's a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And she's literally like, look, it's a ritual with the body. And if the killer touches the body, the body starts bleeding. Oh, that, that sounds fascinating. <laughs> and he, he he just jerks himself around. Oh, uh, hello, hello. Uh, you're not from, you're not from around here. I don't recognize. No, I, I can't say as I am. I was lured in by the scent of apple butter and the sounds of community. And the older woman behind the counter will raise her hand and smile. Mr. Barrow, it's good to see you. Well, bear on my father's side, crow on my mother's. It's good to see you again, ma'am. Anything I can do for you? You ran out of your uh, supplies already? Yes, I have indeed, and I cannot stress enough how much I I require that apple butter on biscuits immediately. Um, go, go ahead. The go scent ahead. is driving me positively mad. Yeah, he, it's right over there by Georgie and the and the stove. Excellent. Uh, thank you. And, and uh, please without... don't. I I noticed Georgie kind of off in the corner, and I offer a brief nod. We've passed each other the one time I've been to church in this community. <laughs> yeah, you haven't yeah. been here that long. No, nope, only a few days. Came in on Saturday and made sure that I was at church immediately the next day. Because right. these people like church. They sure do. Uh, I and mean, as Prudence goes over... to the Primitive Baptist right on the outskirts of town. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Georgie only goes because if he didn't, he get whooped by his mom. Correct. Uh, and as, as Rand is making his way over to the stove, old Joe will be coming back with all the stuff on Georgie's list. I uh, he's just noticed an apple has kind of fallen to the floor, and I pick it up. And uh, sir, did you drop this? Was this part of your order? I look at Joe. No, that wasn't part of his order. Ah, uh, Georgie, this I got uh, your stuff here. Uh, they're gonna put it on the ledger. They know you're good for it. You'll you'll square up the ledger when you get a chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll come by this evening with the wood, and we'll we'll take care of it then. Yeah. And then as as Rand comes up, like Georgie kind of has this sort of like sense knowing that that he's going to show up. And so he just holds up a biscuit without even looking at him. And I'm just going to eyeball Rand and then I'm going to look at the door. I got to go get Miss well, Prudence. Stuff. Not knowing how this nice man knew that I would require a biscuit. Uh, I am grateful nonetheless. So I take the biscuit mm -hmm. and... I kind of give Joe a, you know, give him his space, nice wide berth. Yeah. I see the uh, older woman that people are talking to. I don't believe we've uh, had a chance to meet Miss uh, Rand Barrow. I'm pleased to meet your acquaintance. Uh, I give a brief nod to Miss Palmer. Prudence <laughs> and Palmer, it is a pleasure. You can call me Granny Palmer. Everybody else does. Well, then I'd be honored to call you Granny Palmer as well. Right. At that point, uh, Georgie will take the, the groceries. Th thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, I'm uh, getting, I got to go out and get Miss Pruden's stuff. But just square uh, it up. Yeah, I better run. Uh, I got to go drop this off before Ma has a conniption. Pleasure seeing you, Granny. Uh, I'll be as here, you, Georgie, when you're. If you bring wood by it or anything, I'll be here to help you unload. I'm here till we close. You be careful out there, Georgie. Always, Granny. I'll catch up with you, Ronnie. Uh, I appreciate that. Keep your eyes open. And the door closes with a little chime of the bell. She leans over to Ronnie and says, I'm sorry, I can't be of more help to you. I really, I, I don't go out at night. So I don't know if there was anything unusual. I mean, out in them woods, you hear all sorts of things, and yeah. it's best to just ignore it. Are we discussing the recent unpleasantness to which I've heard tell? Yeah. Has one of the other other deputies gotten to you, Mr. Barrow? Uh, no, I, I haven't been spoken to about it yet. I'm only recently arrived. I heard about it last night. Yeah, word gets around fast when you don't want it to. Well, it seems a reasonably 
small population combined with salacious news is a recipe for getting people talking. Rule what, number one in the newspaper business. What what is salacious? Does it have to do with salads? Yes, kind of. Hmm. Different form of consumption. Now he smiles Juicy at gossip, prudence. Ronnie. Juicy <laughs> gossip. Oh, it has nothing to do with salads then. No. It's something them ladies over there love. Oh. Salads or gossip? The gossip. In my experience, <laughs> everyone loves gossip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't particularly take to, to spreading the gossip. Oh. And speaking of things that should be spreading, I believe I've asked for apple butter. Oh, it's right there in that jar there. Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I begin to judiciously. <laughs> you it starts with, it, it, in it apple starts with like this little smear, this this dainty northern <laughs> smear of apple butter. And yeah, by the but end then of you it, smell that ginger slathered. and cinnamon and clove and you're like, ooh. <laughs> at that point, after a bit, I'm just unhinging my jaw and eating it like a snake. Just, you know, the whole thing's going down. Not, not the first time you unhinged your jaw for something. Uh, but yeah, there was that one time I had a pie eating contest. Ooh. <laughs> One of your last days. I play bosses. with that, you sick freak. I'll, I'll, I'll play with uh, that. All right. Uh, but yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie just kind of like uh, starts to step away from Mr. Barrow. And he's like, oh, well, Miss Ms. Palmer, I, I appreciate you educating me on the, on the situation. I'll try to be a little bit more. Uh, clandestine <laughs> about my use of the ordeal yeah don't you worry right? don't, 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 don't you even worry your little head about that and no. you just don't even need to bring it up do you i mean sheriff pearson wants people to know uh what they're going to be getting into he he's oh, well then he should be going around yes. telling people mm. yes uh, something about an ordeal of blood it's quite an evocative name, don't you think? Um, they, I just learned that it is it is a uh, it is not a good thing. Well, generally, I can think of a few instances where the term "ordeal of blood" would apply to a positive development. And you hear the ladies start to um, increase their whispering. Um, what are they well, saying, Will? What do the ladies say? You gonna try to. <laughs> I'm going to say, at this point, poor Ronnie is helpless and hopeless. Prudence is going to walk away. <laughs> he, he sure is. <laughs> um, okay. So you want to try to eavesdrop on the ladies? Oh, I eavesdrop on everybody. That's kind of my thing. Okay. Creeper. Um, I am a creepy voyeur, yes. But I am a well-spoken creepy voyeur. Okay. Um, let's have you do a perception roll. It's going to be a difficulty five to start off with. Um, okay. but you are I'm trained, trained, perception, yep. so that's going to ease it down to four. So that's going to be a target number of 12. Um, you know, I think that. Uh, no, I don't think I care about expending extra effort on this. Okay. Um, no, I will. I'll spend. I'll spend one level of effort. Okay, so, so that'll cost with my one point one. of intellect then, since you have yeah. two edge. Yes, I is well educated. Eyes goes to school. Yeah. Uh, so let's go down to your twelve. So that would be a roll of a nine, I believe. Uh, that'll bring it down to nine. Yeah. Since you eat down it. another step. That is an 18. Okay. You hear mixtures of conversation. Um, some of the women are complaining about Ronnie being assigned uh, as a deputy, uh, since there are other people who could handle the job a little better, especially Georgie, who was just in here. Um, there's some talk about... Um, him and uh the guthrie girl and how 
she was attached to somebody else before and there's talk of uh, him just kind of like being one of the few people that can be manipulated by the sheriff um, and then there is also some of the women um, are offended that an ordeal of blood is even being considered uh, instead of like actual detective work. Um, but there's, there's very little that Sheriff Pearson won't try. Um, he's not, from the context of their conversation, a lot of people don't like Sheriff Pearson. Um, but he's the one that's almost always around, uh, especially since his uh, wife passed. Um, and Marshall Cartwright always kind of comes and goes between here and Maryland. Um, so he left at the beginning of October. He probably won't be back uh, until after December. So Pearson's the main law in the city now uh, for the winter. Okay. I have made my mental notes about town gossip. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ronnie comes over. Um, yeah, but sure. Pearson is, is getting the word out that uh, he wants people in attendance, you know, he wants to, to kind of have, um, people come up and touch the corpse and, uh, let's see what touch happens. The, touch, pardon me, touch the corpse. Yeah. 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 Why? I mean, from what I heard, it, it's how you catch the killer. How? I mean, I don't know how that works. If Sheriff Pearson is the one with the with the plan, so Sheriff Pearson, in his capacity as an elected official and uh, investigator and lawman, has determined that the easiest way to catch the culprit of this potential murder is to have everyone touch a body and hope something happens. When you say it like that, it feels like not professional just saying just saying it out loud just want to make sure i understand i'm i'm not from here i don't want to offend anyone my ways are not necessarily your ways and so I'm i don't want to you. violate i don't want to violate any local customs if placing my hands upon a days old corpse to prove that i am innocent of its murder is what it will take to uh satisfy any potential issues then I, i'm more than happy to do so um, excellent uh do we have to touch him in a certain place i'm sure concessions can be made uh if you want to just touch his ankle or something like that oh yeah Bur right, well, prudence is ankle, gathering eh? some of the spices to replenish her supply and mm -hmm. she's walking near them and say honestly i've never seen it done but I think the whole point of it is that he's calling everybody there, and whoever don't show up is probably the fuck is probably the killer. See, that makes more sense. The <laughs> right. I know. There, and next, I next, I suppose I'll be told that if we have a potential person that might have done it, if we make a cake from the urine and nail clippings of the victim, that eventually we'll be able to find the person that did it. If it's fed to a dog, it will be able to sniff them out or some such. Oh no, that's Yankee magic. Hey, Rand, you feel someone mm -hmm. standing behind you, Joe? Miss Prudence, I got the is the eggs all you brought? Yeah, that's all we had today for you, dear. I yeah. turn and offer a smile to the nice large man that's behind me. Yeah. And Ronnie, Ronnie just kind of uh nods. I I, I don't pretend to know the plan that Sher Pearson is hatching in, in that big old head of his. Uh, but I know that he's he's sheriff for a reason. Uh so who am I to uh, disagree with his... Uh, One would assume elected vote. 
You keep saying that, and I don't think that's how it works down here. <laughs> More like money and cunning. Seems odd people so, talk the cultures so much aren't about too touching, different. A, touching a corpse, though. <laughs> yeah, Miss uh, Sheriff Pearson is going to be putting it up on display and, and asking people to come up uh, this week. So, you know, if you can, come come by the the city jail and take your turns. That's all right. I think I'll um, let him touch it for me. And I point at <laughs> Rand. He can touch it for me. I kind of looked. You were, you got up right behind me, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like creepy. Well, <laughs> no, I kind of turn, kind of turn. Well, you've taken my scent. I imagine that that'll give you the measure of me, correct? What's that supposed to I mean? I offer a smile. What's that supposed to mean? When you were close enough, like a dog sniffing at an ass, my friend. Yeah, that's about what I smell. I smell a bit of ass. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Prude. Well, I, I while, while you gentlemen do your sparring, I'm going to purchase my... No, ma'am, I'm going to no take these eggs to the being... back. Uh, I misspoke and I beg your apology. No, no sparring being done, ma'am. I apologize if it seemed that way. We were merely having a little bit of friendly palaver. Yeah, that seemed friendly, all right. And she walks no, to the register. <laughs> and I just take the eggs to the back. Yeah. And she's worked out a deal with the store that she supplies yeah. stuff from the farm and it counts towards her store credit. And of course. Yeah. Uh, and, and Ronnie just kind of is left there with Rand for a moment and reaches his hand into his pocket, feels something that he forgot was there and pulls out this crumbled biscuit in a napkin. It's like, oh, God damn it. If you excuse me, Mr. Barrow, I'm uh, I'm gonna go do my rounds, and he rushes off, and you hear the little ding of the bells. He leaves the store. I look around at the store that I have emptied of fellow player characters, and uh, <laughs> well, you are creepy. <laughs> I am not creepy. You all just think I'm creepy because you know what my last name is. I'm not creepy no, at all. No, because you Super asked likeable. about touching the, where you could touch the corpse. That pretty yeah, much did. That's creepy. That's I, was that asking for creepy. I was asking for mocking clarification purposes. <laughs> um, that was creepy. Where do you so, think you touch in the corpse, creep? I was assuming the hand. Um, it's a gentleman. Don't so. worry. If you want special attention from Joe, I'll come back out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know all about special attention Joe's giving. But uh, I, uh, but yeah, the the ladies make themselves scarce after Granny leaves, uh, and so it's I just Constance at the at the counter. I offer a polite nod to Constance, and I slide over a small gold nugget to cover my uh, tab. No, oh. awfully generous of you, Mister Barrow. That's well, what I have. Don't have much, by the way, of paper script. Got it in the Montana Straits. No, oh, well, you know, we we still appreciate appreciate a bit of bartering down here, so you don't you don't have to worry none. I certainly appreciate that. Tell me, uh, Miss Prudence, she's obviously a woman of the the world. She's been around here for quite some time. Hmm. Is she? Well protected at home. Does she have a gun, you mean? Because I, I, I think she does. And she has her son living on the property with her, so she... Oh, excellent. I am glad to hear that. Uh, yeah. With this kind of potential, I mean, one murder already, I fear for the safety of an old woman living by herself. Pleased to see that she has someone there to watch over her. No, oh, no, she got family with her. She should be fine. And then worse comes to worse, your grocer over there, I'm sure, is a fair hand in a scrap. Joe, Joe, Joe's built big, but I, I never see him take arms to anybody. I imagine he's quite capable of properly roused. He's Thank a, you very, yeah, he's, very he's much. A, he's a bit of a teddy bear if you want to really get to know him. I liken him to a Labrador. Loyal and cunning in his own way. I've never seen anything to, to show cunning, but uh, he is loyal. I'll give him that. 
It's been an absolute pleasure. Look forward to seeing you at church. You have a good day. I offer a nod. And then I uh, whistle my way out the door eating an apple. And then, um, God, what do I want to do that's super creepy since that's apparently what not only chat, but my fellow PCs expect me to do. Um, so that thing that we talked about before about my, my reason for knowing the group that still applies, right? Yes. In which case I will be slowly following, uh, Miss Palmer as quietly as I know how. Okay. I would spend two intellect points on it, but I don't have to. Sure. <clears throat> um, Where's Putin's going? Once she's she's done... going to go talk to the damn sheriff because he's being a fucking fool. <laughs> <laughs> Once I see uh, Rand is left, yeah, I'm going to uh, break out my little thimble that's in my pocket. Oh. And let the is orb this... weaver out. Ooh, we're using, we're using ciphers already? Yep. Oh. I'm going to use my cipher. I'm saving mine. <laughs> I mean, you can if it's you want so to. Hard, it's so hard to break the hoarding mentality. <laughs> it is, they tell you, you don't you don't have to hoard here. Yep. I'm going to use my orb weaver spider to let it build its nest right there in the corner. You can come back to me in a little bit. I want to okay. see what it says when it's time. Sure. Um, so do you want to have done that while everybody was there? Cause no, I wait until I see... Rand left for after he's been gone about three or four minutes. I because nobody's gonna notice me letting an orb weaver at spider out of a thimble. I just let it loose over okay. in the corner. I mean, you're not gonna get much out of him because it's it says for the next 10 minutes the web catches thoughts and secrets and information. Yeah, up to a square mile though. So I want up to a square mile that I didn't see. Yeah, oh, you a sneaky motherfucker. Okay, yeah, up to a square mile. I'll All get right. three questions when we're done. I, sh I need to keep reading things. Uh, okay. So, given where uh, the store is on Thompson, on Simpson, and uh, and Burwell, the uh, the courthouse is well within a square mile. <laughs> so you're going to get a lot of information if you really want it. Um. Even even the boarding house uh, is not that far from the courthouse itself. Uh, where did Georgie go once he was done with his business? So first he would have dropped the groceries off um, and then uh, probably had a lighter breakfast than normal, given uh, he did have a biscuit. Did have um, but he would try, like anything he didn't eat, he would pocket up. Uh, what day of the week is this? It is Monday. Monday. Um, so yeah, so typically he'd be, um, yeah, once he's done with breakfast, it would be going out to the woods. Okay. Um, he'd probably take the long way around just to try to see if he could, uh, catch sight of someone around the store and then head back toward the woods. Okay. Uh, as you come back around before you make your way into the woods, um, you'll... Do you have perception trained, is the question. Nope. Good times. Uh, what does uh, Rand's shenaniganery do for him? Well, I just so happen to have my old Gods of Appalachia book here. Yeah. I'll tell you exactly what Rand Chicanery does. Thanks. Uh, uh, if the chicanery has anything to do with Georgie and Rand, I know where he is and what he's Yeah, doing. Georgie Georgie knows what Georgie knows where I am. We worked that out. That's yep. Georgie's thing. Yep. Um, no, this actually doesn't. This, this has to do with um, Rand's weird Being class creepy? thing. <laughs> Yeah. Unconsciously creepy, that's the ability. No, it's um 
Yeah. So I slip away from a selected target and hide from view in a nearby shadow, behind a tree or furnishing, or in the next room. Even if in full view of the target for each level of effort applied, you can attempt to affect one additional target as long as all your targets are next to each other action to initiate uh, two plus intellect points to an act. Okay. Um, so for now, it's this Palmer, but if yeah. somebody else shows up, I'll spend a point of intellect to work for them too. Okay. Um, so there's a moment where as Georgie's coming down one way, he'll see Miss Palmer kind of turn the corner and head uh, down College Street towards the college and the courthouse and all those other businesses on the on that street. Um, and I also corner, feel need to add, I'm doing this at like a nice stroll. I'm not sharpening a knife as I follow her or like <laughs> salivating. I, was, I just want to clarify because I feel like there's now some perceptions on my intent and notice, I don't like it. He didn't not, say he's not doing this as he's following her. He's not rubbing his hands. So right, right, right. I I did not assume any nefarious uh, dealings on your part. Thank you. I thank did. you. Now I, do. I did. Now I do. Uh, I didn't. But uh, out of the corner of your eye, and when you turn to look, you don't see him, but you know he's there. Um, you would have caught a little bit of Rand Barrow, kind of strolling in the same direction um and although you can't see him and you do have that feeling that you know where he is you kind of feel him turn the same corner prudence will actually stop when she sees georgie right next to him whoa nelly <laughs> yeah yeah, I want to add, if I see Georgie, like, just whistling and strolling on up, I may adjust course. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You thought old Joe looked big. Jeez, Georgie's like. No, know. no, George, Georgie's, George is a hoss. He's Georgie's a like a. Shit house. Yeah. Georgie's yes, he like a Brock Lesnar looking motherfucker. <laughs> I, I know Georgie. Yeah, yeah. Like, think, think Brock Lesnar, yeah. but then, like, lumberjack Chris Evans. Yeah, he's like. Got, his muscles have muscles. <laughs> I, re I realize that when when we're doing these when we're doing these games, character description doesn't enter too much into it because people just see our faces. But yeah, Georgie's a big dude. Big dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he he's been. Old Joe's the bear, trees. and Georgie is the beefcake. Okay. <laughs> yeah, jo Georgie. Georgie has been. <laughs> Cutting shit down for a long time. Yeah, he, he's yeah. got a worker's body. Yeah. Um, he's a lumberjack and that's okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so she stops her cart and her, her mule. And uh, she said, like, Georgie, you heading out to the woods? Uh, yes, Granny. I uh, just dropped off groceries for Ma. How's she doing? I didn't get a chance to ask you early. You know... They always say it gets easier with time, but doesn't seem that way. But all things considered. You need me to make something up for her? Well, I don't know if she'd appreciate that. I can make her a cream or something. Ain't nothing magical about that. Ease of pains. Maybe I can convince her it's some newfangled cosmetic from the north. I'll talk to the doctor and get him to put one of his labels on it. That might work. He owes me one anyway. I helped him with a, a ulcer he had. I feel that is way too much information for me, <laughs> Granny, but... <laughs> nah, stomach also. He was upset stomach. I told him to take some ginger and make some tea out of it, and it settled it right down. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. Your remedies have always been the best. <sighs> Thank you. All right, well, I'll make up something for your mama. You swing by the farm and pick it up this oh. evening. 
Yeah, I, uh, I'll drop off some wood, too, when I'm heading that oh, way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I know my son, he's he's getting some for us, too, but we appreciate it. Uh, uh, winter's coming, so yeah. every little bit helps. Absolutely. You take care now, Georgia. You be safe. And you, too, Granny. And when he says that, he kind of looks in the vague sort of general direction mm-hmm. that he feels Rand is. Oh, um, there, there's no need to to scan like you will out of the corner of your eye. You won't see Rand. Um, you'll know more or less in what direction he is. But you'll yes. see um, if you could describe for me what the twins look like. And how you imagine they would look like when their lives were taken from them. Who, me or? No, no, no. He's oh. talking to me. Oh, okay. That's Georgie. Okay. That's for Georgie. At, at first, at first I thought he was talking something here. else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got, I'm not going to lie. I kind of got a little weirded out for a second. Um, I know I know what everybody got except for Joe. <laughs> Nobody know what Joe got. Nobody. Uh, not even Joe know what got Joe got. I know Joe uh, got a secret. That's all. <laughs> I mean, they were pretty young, uh, you know, 17, 18, um, like just barely men when they went off. Um, I'm going to look yeah. in the direction he's looking and I'm going to use Sensi Unseen. Snap. Something's got his attention. <sighs> there. Although for Georgie, he sees just the the image of the twins kind of hovering behind where Rand is watching the two of you. Um, for Prudence, there's not the same image there. There is the sight of what looks to be these two sprigs of petrified wood that are just oozing this black sap. Yeah, as soon as, like, Georgie sees the twins, um, he would probably remember them in, you know, the, the last time he saw both of them before they went off. Um, you know, it's it's that that sort of vigor that only, you know, 17, 18 year olds can have, especially, you know, going off to war. Um, but as soon as he sees him, uh, it he's not like he he's probably also superstitious to a degree. And he's seen weird shit in the woods, but seeing it in the middle of the town is a different thing. And seeing them like it'll he'll definitely stop and get this concern look probably and as you make eye contact with them they will just kind of fade into the 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 kind of haze kind of like that that um that sensation you get when you're looking at hot pavement that kind of sizzling of the air that mirage Uh, the mirage sensation yeah. uh, that'll just leave the blue and gray of their uniforms as the last kind of color you see. Uh, as soon as, yeah, as soon as he's at, like, he'll stop like dead in his tracks and even probably take a few steps away. Mm. And then uh, I, 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 sorry, granny, I gotta, I gotta get to work. And no, he'll no, no, like, just, just a moment. I want to roll understanding to understand what the fuck I'm seeing. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, this is magical understanding, correct? Mm-hmm. Or it is supernatural understanding, which she has a capacity with supernatural. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I was going to say, and Georgie has an inability with understanding magic. So he just knows whatever the fuck this is. He wants nowhere near it. Right. Um, so because you're trying to understand uh, something magical and because, uh, you do have a training in sensing danger, Mm -hmm. Granny, uh, you can ease this twice. Nice. Uh, so this will bring you down to a difficulty of four. Yeah. So that's going to be a target of 12. I got a 16. Okay. 
Uh, this is something that is trying to touch Georgie. This is something that isn't his in any way, shape, or form. And as he tries to back away from them, the trees themselves will turn to sap and this black shadow that creeps into the alleyway between buildings where it'll become one with the shadow that Rand Barrow is giving off. Do I see Rand as well? Now you do. Okay. Yes. Um, she literally, Rand, you literally see her eyes lock on you for like a second, and then she looks behind you. And I'm looking. Mm. Ben doing a Ben. <laughs> Ben doing Ben. Yep, I'm doing it, Ben. I've been muted. I can see it, and I decided it's, it's Welcome time. back, Ben. Welcome back. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks, guys. Welcome back. Love y'all. Um, yeah, you're, so you're, you're, I didn't you're... see I didn't see weird Civil War people or petrified trees, right? No, you just so, saw Prudence not. look dead in your yeah. eyes, so she saw you, and then she looked behind yeah. you. So um, I was going to say, and then you probably saw Georgie back in the fuck up, like, like terrified. Look, and then just, yeah back off very quickly prudence which for no someone fear. his size is <laughs> i start strolling towards them um but i'm looking over my shoulder now because she's focused on something there's and nothing there in which case then there's nothing there and i once again these people are so weird they're so <laughs> just all of the everything they do is just weird it's all superstitious and just strange uh as you are stepping towards them we'll cut back to the store as there is a new elaborate and beautiful and if you don't know where you're looking you won't find it but there is this webbing in the corner uh between the front of the store and the rear room um, where there is a cot in case old Joe ever needs to have a lie down or whatever, but the orb spider is done. What do you think old Joe has caught in his web? Now let's find out. I'm going to ask. I got three questions. Three questions. First one's easy. Mm -hmm. Where did the creepy guy go? The creepy guy has been following Granny Prudence. Who else did the creepy guy talk to? Creepy guy talked to Ronnie and Georgie, as well as uh, Granny Prudence and Constance. Where are they now? They are a block and a half away from the courthouse. In a little triangle, they're all together. I'm going to go check to see if old widow Rosalie needs anything. I'll be back. All right. That sounds good. And I'm going to step out the back. When I step outside, I, I look, make sure nobody's watching. Mm. What are you doing? I am going I, to. Uh, I mean, I know what you're doing, but what are you doing for the audience? Well, first of all, it's going to cost me one of my intellect pool to do this because I got a nice two edge. Nice. And all you Tell see, me. Joe looks around, make sure nobody's watching and he jumps. But when he jumps, Joe shifts into an eagle mm. who takes flight to fly call, where call, he can watch. Call, motherfuckers. All right. And as old Joe... And I'm going suddenly, right towards where suddenly just they all it becomes uh, an animal. Uh, I think this is a good point to go to break. So we'll see everybody in a couple minutes. Secrets Bye. within secrets, everybody. Ten minutes. Yep. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, last we left off, uh, everybody was kind of conglomerating and coming together uh, at the corner of College uh, and Maine. Um, 
parking just a few blocks down from uh, from the courthouse itself. And as uh, this shadow swoops by uh, almost invisibly to, to most of you from uh, a bird up above, we see uh, Prudence and Georgie looking over at Rand, uh, who had stepped forward uh, before we went to break. Nothing behind you, but Georgie and Prudence are both very keen on what was there. Georgie, what did you see? I saw something that couldn't have been there. Well, I know what was there. What'd you see? I saw the twins. No, it won't the twins. It is something I that wants figured. you. When you you be careful out there in them woods today. And when you come by my place and drop off some wood, I have something for you. I know you don't see things too well. I'll give you something to protect you. I beg to differ. He sees plenty. He's actually incredibly perceptive. Now, he's got good senses about him. He just don't see the stuff that lurks about. He well, might see people, but not the things. I can only assume the things that you're talking about are the things that I've seen following you the last few days. Who, me? Yes, oh, you, uh, Miss Palmer. I get things following me a lot. Yes, well, these ones seem to be particularly malevolent. I can't make out particulars, but I thought I would keep pace and watch over. But it looks like you have quite an apt protector as it stands. I <laughs> look at Georgie, who is incredibly perceptive, I might add. <laughs> oh, I saw you. Once he looked, I, I saw it, but it's all right. Not too much can sneak up on me. I always got a sense of something, but I tell you, I'm not too concerned. If something wants to pick a fight with Granny Prudence, they going to have a, a good licking coming from me. You know, I ain't scared of no fight. I know, baby. I know. But. Oh, she, Trust me, she saw the shadow. <laughs> well, I've, I can say that this is, I, I've seen, I, I've lived a life and I've seen many an interesting thing in that time. But even my short few days here, I've seen quite a number of things that are strange at best. Every superstition has a kernel of truth here. As you say that, Everybody will notice um, one of the other deputies, a Miss Palmer. You will recognize him, even at this distance. Uh, that's Hank Henry Myers. Uh, he married Angela Marie Myers. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a they have a four year old daughter named Elizabeth. Uh, but he is running like the devil is chasing him out of the courthouse and down Clay Street. Now, what on earth? I figure like at this point, uh, Georgie would have been trying to like disengage from Rand specifically, but seeing the the deputy running, it'll kind of catch him in his tracks and he'll look. And you'll see kind of stumbling behind him and coughing up um, what looks to be just chunks of uh, this kind of ichor, this this bile um, is Ronnie. And he collapses in the middle of the street. I'm going to go find me a place where I, an alley I, where I won't be seen mm -hmm. so I can shift back out of form. That way I can happen to walk up. That there's, right there no is, is what I saw. The things that was luring you 
Georgie. They had that same black icon. I'm sorry, is that man supposed to be dead? <laughs> no, he was just alive a minute ago. This was the gentleman speaking with us. I doubt he is now. All right, I, you you gentlemen deal with that. I'm going to go in that courthouse and see what the hell is going on. Uh, if it's all the same to you, Granny, I'm going to stick with you because whatever that is, is not my cup of tea. Well, as the clueless Yankee that doesn't understand supernatural stuff outside of what he can do, I see then a sick go, person. So you, 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 gonna... you go, you go, you go catch Clay, <laughs> Mister Barra. Uh, I was gonna go run after the sick guy and try to help him. The guy who um, just left the street. street. Yeah. Hank, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Hank. Um, if um, if Georgie could please roll the die for me. Hmm. Um. You don't have any skills that I can see that are going to help you? Nope. Um, okay. And you don't have... Uh, well, let me see. Where's your equipment? Do you have anything that could help you? I have... Uh, uh, I have a pocket knife. I have a hatchet. I have a lumber axe. A wilderness survival guide, a thermos, travel pack, lantern, rope, hammock, compass. All stuff he would use out in the woods. Yeah, nothing that'll help you here. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a flat roll. Um, okay. If you would like to use some might to um, ex expend some effort to lower the... Um, the difficulty of the task at hand, you can. You have Do I get to know one. the difficulty ahead of time? You know what? Sure. Uh, it's going to be a difficulty six. You're, you're, Jesus. You're a nicer game master than I am. You know, I try to be. So, how and does that work then in terms of how much I'm expending versus what I would get out of it? So if you want to put a level of effort towards it, since you have nothing else that can help you, uh, you have nothing to ease it down from a six. So if you're going to roll as is, you're, you're looking for an 18 or higher to okay. succeed on this roll. Okay. Uh, if you put in a level of effort, which you're allowed one, um, yep. it would ease the task down to a five. So making okay. the target 15 or higher. Do Okay. Do I see anything going on with him before you roll? Do I see anything going on with him as I was coming out of the alley? As he starts to follow Miss Prudence, uh, there is a rumbling in your belly, and you start to feel that same desire to expel whatever is inside of you. Because so I was goddamn thinking biscuits. about using a, a, a power or one of my abilities if I see something going on with Georgie. I can encourage, you I use to encouragement be... to give him a, an asset. Oh. If I see something. Okay. Um, you know what? Do you have two D10s? Yeah, I got two D10s. Got lots of D10s. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's do a percentile chance that you will uh, find him. So you roll... A percentile, and then I'll give Georgie the opportunity to choose which 30% slice you want your success uh, to land in. I've already rolled, so I already know the answer. I'm just not telling Hi. you. All right, so 70 to 100? Yeah. I got okay. an 82. All right. So you do come around in time to see Georgie hold his stomach and start to spread his legs like he's about to hurl. Yeah, I'm going to use. So what does that end up doing for me? I'm going to use encouragement. Okay. Which is going to give you an easier difficulty one level. Right. Okay. <laughs> Cost me nothing Eight. to do it. Uh, just, Perfect. Just push that out, Georgie. You can do this. Come on. Okay. So that eases it one, and then I can do an effort to ease it another. Yep. Correct. So uh, that'll go from a six to a four? To a four. So, I mean, the target Perfect. will be 12. Game Master? Yes. 
Are you inflicting a narrative thing on one of my fellow associates? Describe a narrative thing. Uh, this is an intrusion. For example, a negative character trait that would infect their uh, their character that might be considered an intrusion. <laughs> it is not. It is not an intrusion, and I am not trying to negatively affect them <laughs> in any way. You son of a bitch. No. Uh, so with the encouragement and that, um, I just uh, so I have to spend then a point of might for the effort. Two. Two. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, the first, the first level effort of effort costs three points of your okay. pool. You have an edge of one, so that reduces the cost by one. So you have to use two points. Okay, so then uh, I will spend the two points with everything to lower it two to give me a twelve because I rolled a thirteen. Nice. Uh, you expel the chunks of uh, biscuit with small veins of black. Um, in the quantity that the apple butter was used. So the more apple butter you used, the more you start to, to vomit out. Uh, if you didn't use hardly any apple butter, then there's very few traces of the black ichor in your system. Um, I don't actually remember if I ever said that I used the apple butter or not, but uh, I know I had a biscuit ate with it on it. Yeah. Um, there's a small yeah. glazing of it on the top of it. Yeah. No, I'm going to be dead in a second then because I slathered it in that shit. You sure did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and, he, and one of my favorite comments that you made is that you evened out all of your stats. So when yeah. it comes to your might roll that you're going to make soon. I, I also yeah. love that I asked if this was considered an intrusion because I happen to have an ability that deals with being poisoned and toxined, but I, I have no experience points because they have not been offered to us. So I you guess have it's one. a straight might roll. Everybody I have one. one. Everybody starts I'm gonna Everybody use my, started with one. I'm going to, I did not know that I am a bad player. I'm no, going to go ahead and I, use I will my... let you know that it is not an intrusion. So you don't have to negate it in any way, shape or form. This no, just... but if I have an ability that will help, for example, right. um, turning poison or disease into a less debilitating version of itself, that might prove useful. Sure. That will prove. Okay. Useful. Um, is that one of your, is this a damaging I'm effect? so glad prudence ate at home. <laughs> we have McDonald's at home. That's right. <laughs> um, it, would this be considered a damaging effect, whatever you're about to do to me? If I fail? Uh, it, it technically would, yes. Okay. So I will spend one that one experience for weak strain so that whatever damage this inflicts in the event that I fail, because I, I suspect I will, mm. um, it will only be half as effective. Okay. Not that I don't trust my dice, but sure. you know. I know. Uh, luckily, I, there hasn't been a, a chaos goblin uh, trying to warn us about the impending doom of a certain lead singer. Yeah. So we yeah. have that going for us. Uh, cool. But unfortunately, it is also widely known that I do consistently embrace said lead singer with stickers on my laptop. Correct. All right, so um, I might roll. So you're going to do a roll. Uh, it's going to start off at uh, difficulty six. You don't have any skills to help you ease it, but you do no. have that ability, you said? Yeah, so it'll make whatever it is half as virulent. Yeah. So do would you... that make it a difficulty three? No, no. Okay. Uh, it just it halves the amount of damage that you would take okay. or the the negate the, the negative effects of it. Uh, do you have any assets that could help you as far as like equipment is concerned? Uh, uh, well, let's oh, see. My compass, compass probably no. My no. compass probably won't help. No. Uh, my canary is probably being eaten by an eagle right now. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm in person mode. I'm not an eagle. Yeah, no, no. Caca. Uh, that should that, make that it time worse. Is Leather jacket. Nope. Yeah, just looks no. super cool. Yeah. Flashlight. Okay. I can see the pain coming. Don't need the flashlight. Nope. I think I'm pretty uh Okay. I, I think I think barring a major event, I'm I'm pretty screwed. All right. So you do have two levels of effort. Uh so you're a little bit better off. Uh do you want to use any of your might? Well, that will be five points of might to well, not really because you two have an points of, of one. effort. Well, that's why it'd be five points instead of six points. No, it'd be, f it'd be four points. The first 
use of effort cost three. After that, it costs two. Oh, okay. So then I'll do, I'll, sure, why not? What's the okay. worst that can happen? I'm still going to fail. Eh, there you go. So you ease it by two, uh, bringing you to a difficulty of four. So that's 12 is your target number. That is a 12. On the money. Uh, it is It is rougher for you. Georgie yeah. seems to. I'm not Brock Lesnar. Yeah. No, you're not. I was going to say he five. also slathered it. Yeah, yeah, I, I I drank the butter. I yeah. love apple butter, and now I've got half my bite pool. Yeah, uh, <laughs> small price to pay for apple butter. Yeah, question. Do it. If I have one of my ciphers, mm. um, cancels an ongoing effect and restores mm. points equal to the cipher level level to a single pool, mm. could I, in theory, use that? to cancel out this like poisoning if i feel like it's an ongoing thing the normally yes you would have uh because you fought off the effects of it it is not an ongoing effect you okay. have you have expelled the poison from your body if you had failed okay. the role you would have kept the biscuit in your system and then it would okay. become an ongoing situation for you. Uh, okay. So the, the role is to purge yourself of the venom within you, uh, which you did with flying colors, uh, simple kind of bend over, lean up against the wall and just push the contents of your stomach out. Uh, Rand looks like he is trying to pass a kidney stone. Like he is doubled over uh it is like he's trying to pass a watermelon through the size of an orange. Uh, and here legs, I was thinking I'd never know the miracle of childbirth. Yeah, legs wide, knees buckling. Um, it looks offensive to see him uh, throwing up the same biscuit. Uh, but you notice that there is an abundance of black ooze and and bile that's coming out of his mouth like there's there is a, instead of the kind of normal amount of drool that you would have kind of water falling over a chin this is just black it's pure obsidian and onyx just glistening in the sun uh whereas normally it would be just that kind of thin glaze of of saliva this is thick it's almost like molasses uh, I That's think something you don't in, see every day. City slicker making an oil slick. Instinctively, I think oh, Georgie God, is going to go, go shoot the old woman that made the apple butter. God, I, I think instinctively Georgie is going to go over to Rand um, mm -hmm. and sort of like trepidatious initially. Um, but like the the protector sees him sick and he's just going to kind of like gently, but also very firmly grab him by the back of his shirt. Mm. Uh, and kind of like lift him up, pull a handkerchief out of his um, hand or out of his pocket and give it to him. Is like, you may want to wipe your mouth. I mean, I think at the sudden change in altitude um, that being lifted by uh, Lumberjack Lesnar there, yeah. uh, I think that part of what was in him is now out of him again. Uh, he was, you know, felt like he was holding it together and then. Yeah. The world so, shifted height. Yeah, oh, and he'll just start like gently patting him on the back, which is probably yeah. still too rough. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's just like there's just it, it, it just goes all over him. Yeah. I, I civil I civil now... war. Chris Evans comes over and just kind of yeah. hurks hurks you up, and the moment he does that last it's little all, bit, yeah, that law, yeah, he's he's wearing it. Come on, um, and I feel terrible about it. Out of game, no. Um, uh, or rather, in game, out of game. It's just funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, both, he's both of you in my are in the splash zone uh, of yeah. this last one, and it's just the moment that and now we're brothers. The... <laughs> now forever. Uh, the moment that it it hits you, and you try to bring your your handkerchief to it, uh, it feels tacky, sticky, very, very. Like the more you rub, the harder it is to take out and. The, the moment that you press the handkerchief against it, you can feel it squeezing through the pores of your cotton. Uh, oh, as soon as it hits his shirt, he's going to fight to take it off because he doesn't know what this is. But yeah. is Prudence still yeah. with us? Yeah. 
<laughs> Miss Prudence, you want to come look at this? This looks odd. I'm first going to go check on the officer that collapsed and see Ronnie? if he's actually living. Ronnie's barely breathing. He's barely holding on. Okay, she's going to go get her doctor's bag and pour some Ipecac down his damn mouth. Yeah, get that Ipecac. <laughs> we got will, a gusher. Uh, I will hold myself up using Mount Georgie. Perfect. She going to try to save Georgie. this poor fucking idiot. So while, as, while Miss Burns is doing that, I'm just going to watch Rand. Okay. Yeah, so as Rand tries to, like, lean on Georgie, yeah. Um, like okay. he's he's probably seen like people, you know, with like food poisoning or whatever. Yeah. Um, and while Prudence runs off, Georgie is just gonna like gently but not so gently kind of shrug Rand off so he sits down, and then he's gonna go over to the officer and pretty much like force his finger into his throat trying to get him to throw up. Okay. Hey, Prudence had twelve freaking children. She's seen more damn vomit than ever. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Georgie knows that he felt better throwing up mm -hmm. and he knows that Rand did. So if if that's kind of the idea, then he's just going to yeah, yeah she's try put, and she's force put, him to throw you up. You see the bottle. It's Ipecac. You know that shit will make you vomit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to let Prudence roll for what happens to... Uh, Ronnie. All right. Because one of one of the favorite one of my favorite things now as uh, as we come into uh, the heavy dice rolling of the system is that I don't have to roll any dice. No, you don't. As the game master, they tell you that you don't get to roll any dice. You need me to encourage you there, please. I, I believe so because I've got no might. <laughs> well, you're not you're not rolling to use your might. You're you're rolling for Ronnie. Oh, uh, okay. So, so just, he's a, he's a beefcake too. So yeah, he he'll so have some might. <laughs> he'll have some might to to sustain himself. Um, if, in, well, I'm not encouraging Ronnie. I, I'll put in some okay. effort to that. Okay. Uh, Ronnie will have one level of effort, so he'll he'll I'll subtract three from his might pool. Um, and because of the Ipecac, uh, I'll say that that eases his task uh, by a total of three. So okay. if you roll nine or higher, you will save Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie insinuated that I uh, ten. had something Ooh. to do with stuff. So. <laughs> uh, between... She's going to pour it down his mouth and make sure that he t she tills his head back so it goes down yeah. the throat. Yeah. And then she's going to yeah. roll him over. Aim away from you, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah she's gonna roll him uh, over with his back to her, so he'll vomit on his side and not choke on it. Oh yeah, yeah. like as soon as soon as she dumps it into him, it, yeah. Georgie will make sure to aim him away, knowing that when he it's gonna he project out. Rand, yeah, <laughs> and it does. Yeah. There, there's a moment where when when you get to to Ronnie, like he looks like he is struggling. He looks all like he's on death's door. He ain't getting no breath. Yeah, he's turning he, blue. He looks like death warmed over. Yeah. He is he is trying to hold in this sensation. Uh, it, like he's fighting the urge. Now, to Ronnie, vomit. you got to let that go. And she pours that shit down his mouth and ch ch tilts his chin back. <laughs> the the moment you kind of help him swallow by massaging his throat, and then you turn him over, you see that his eyes go from rolling back, and then he becomes cognizant of where he is, what he's just uh, imbibed. And then you just see the stomach shoot <laughs> into his body. Yeah. And you've seen that before. You know what's yeah, coming. Yeah, I know what's coming. And mm -hmm. between you and Georgie, you roll him over and there is this cone of biscuit and bile that shoots out of his mouth. But it's going to projectile. It won't get on him. It's going no. to projectile. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does not get on either one of you. Yeah. Uh, but there is this just cone of uh jackson pollock of biscuit and mm -hmm. black ooze that just shoots out of his mouth and he starts to cry uh as he's pushing and pushing and it takes about mm -hmm. four or five good convulsions before he's uh, dry to, even mm -hmm. it, it, there's one for every biscuit he put in his mouth mm -hmm. And she and she's just taking her handkerchief and she's just wiping his forehead and saying, Ronnie, it's all right. It's all right. Granny Prudence is here. It's all right. Uh, but uh, Joe will see Hank come running back with the doctor. Uh, <clears throat> and he stops the moment he sees this display of innards that is now on the street. Mm -hmm. 
and uh god bless him hank is not the best does not have the best constitution uh and he immediately <laughs> turns around puts his hand <laughs> on the corner of the building and just hurls yes, it it's disgusting <laughs> This is like that meme where one person vomits and it's this. like everybody Every vomits. This. <laughs> Nobody put vomit on their on their sheet for a no, no, we I didn't. learned a valuable lesson about the, the trigger warning sheets. <laughs> yeah. You know, so this is where we are now. Well, Doctor, it's nice of you to make it. Uh, he he not miss miss prudence uh is is running okay he yeah i gave over. him some epicac he was starting to turn blue trying to hold it in so oh, I, he, yeah. he yeah he let it out and he's better now oh you might have just saved this boy's life um and he kind of oh, starts God, it was the water. apple butter oh who made the apple butter apple butter joe who made the apple butter down at the store do I know who made the apple butter? You do know who made the apple butter because you were there when it was delivered. There's a whole case of apple butter that was made uh, particularly, specifically for the store. And who made uh, it so I can... Somebody didn't leave one on the tree for the devil. Mm. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> As soon as I'm soon as that comes out of first, as yeah. soon as that uh, that comes out of Rand, like Georgie's gonna like smack him as sort of like don't say that in front of Granny. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he curses, but not don't, in front well, of Granny. Don't, don't you dare that use that name in vain. My might cool from vomiting, <laughs> and I just got smacked by a two hundred eighty-five pound water baby. I guess I go flying eight feet, hit the ground, curl into the fetal position, and weep, oh, so, weep quietly. <laughs> you just you just hobble back against the building. We'll uh, make a man out of you, Rand. Yeah, so you can fight the Huns. Uh, I want to hurt you with shadows. <laughs> uh, the the delivery was made by the eldest son of Geraldine Bur uh, Geraldine Drummond. And what Gunther delivered it this morning. Uh, I unloaded that off the, the cart from when Gunther brought it by. Uh, one of the drumming boys. Yeah, Geraldine makes it. Yeah, one Anybody else get this today? Uh, yeah. A lot of people eat the, is apple butter. I mean, it's pretty I mean, popular. we're going to have to make sure this doesn't happen to anybody else. Yeah. Oh, I think it's well, too I late I assure for you that. I won't be giving a positive review of this when I write in my article. Yeah, I'm oh. going to, I'll be back. I'm going to go down to the store and uh, take care of that apple butter problem. Yeah. So I'm going to head off that, let them have their scene while I'm heading out. All right. Ronnie, you okay? Uh, I, I I think I'll, I'll be all right. Uh, get, get you uh, some water, honey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You think he's good enough to go home, Doc, or you think he needs to go to the? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit with him a spell and and make sure that he's all right. All right, um, I'm gonna go talk to the sheriff. I'm gonna go with Granny at this point because if the doc says he has him, that that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Otherwise, Georgie would have offered to like carry him wherever yeah. they needed and, to go. And there's a moment. And I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna go with Joe because I believe that splitting the party should be done evenly. Sure. And Just like uh, the apple but yeah, the apple butter was poison, so I'm going where the apple butter poison was. Divide sure. and conquer. Divide yeah. I was gonna and say, conquer. Yeah, it's and a good thing I'll, you I'll... can't go back in the store with me. And Joe and I are best friends. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, and of all the people that Georgie would run off with, it would be Prudence. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Uh, and there's a moment as Georgie and Prudence are going up the steps into the courthouse that Hank turns around and he takes two steps towards Ronnie, sees the display again, and loses the rest of his breakfast. Um, I swear, that poor boy's got a weak constitution. And she goes on again. <laughs> Uh, and it didn't even have any of the butter at all, <laughs> at, at all. all. Uh, but you go inside and you see um, behind his desk and the marshal has an office. It's a big corner office. Um, it has its own door. It's closed, uh, but the blinds are open. You can see that it's empty in the corner next to the office is where the sheriff uh, has laid himself out. Mm hmm. 
Uh, there is a desk in front of his that would normally be for like a secretary or one of the deputies. Uh, it is empty right now. It looks like the only two of the three deputies that were on duty were Hank and Ronnie. Um, but he hears the door open and looks up from the paperwork that he was working on. Uh, and he immediately stands up, takes off his hat as he sees uh, Prudence walk in. Uh, Miss, Miss Palmer. Uh, Sheriff. Pleasure to see you. Your boy Ronnie is probably going to have to take a day to be sick. I, he did not look well, and I told him to go see the doc. And Well, the doc is with him now. Good. I, I helped him get out what was bugging his stomach, and the doctor's with him now. But boy is stubborn. He... The apple butter at the store this morning is called what caused it. Yeah, it almost butter. got me too. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joe and Mr. Bauer are going back to the store to make sure no one else gets any. Oh, Joe? Yeah. I didn't think he left that store. Oh, he was with us when it happened. So, where's this oh. body of the. Uh, Latin. Oh, uh, I got it downstairs in the basement. Uh, I was preparing one of the viewing rooms for tonight. I want to I want to try to create an orderly kind of. Uh, You're going to create chaos. You know this, right? I, I Miss Palmer, I, I got to tell you the. I've been reading into the old ways, and I think that, given the uh, the strangeness of the situation over at the at the Fulton House, that this uh, this merits some. What sort of strangeness there? Now, Miss Palmer, you know I'm not at liberty to discuss casework with civilians. You are wanting civilians to touch a dead body that is evidence in a case. And calling it an ordeal of blood to a bunch of Christian women. Exactly. Now, that's just the way it was described to me. Uh, and the and what I read about in these, uh, these papers from back in uh, colonial times. I'm aware of what your little old deal is. All right, then you know it works. <sighs> I don't know that for certain. I've never witnessed it myself. But mm. what I know is that is not good detective work. And it will be frowned upon. Miss Prudence, um, to be frank, I, I have very little to go on as far as uh, leads are concerned. The, the man... And he leans against his desk, um, kind of like he doesn't want to give this away. Uh, now, you know Georgie here. is the, the best soul in the world. He can be trusted. I, I understand. Yeah, I just... <clears throat> I can walk outside if it makes you feel better, Sheriff. Uh, no, it's not. It's not either of you. It's, it's just the... Uh, th with the marshal gone, uh, I got a Tweedo D and Tweedo Dumb outside, trying to make the most of a good situation here. And Byron is is shaping out to be a good police officer, a good detective, good man overall. But given the fact that that. His son is sick. Uh, it, 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 it's reduced my manpower. And so uh, my good set of eyes aren't available to me. Um, if I put my good set of eyes to it, will you tell me what you saw at the house? If you, if you want to help out, Granted, Palmer, that would be, might be much, much, much appreciated. And I think um, the house was locked. The windows were shut. 
and locked from the inside. This man was found in the comfort of his home. By all accounts, there's nothing that smells of misdoings. It's very easy to, to write the man off as having had a heart attack and just a string of bad luck finally ends with this man's life being taken. But I saw something strange in his house when we finally got in. He had a full body mirror in his room that was covered by a sheet. People don't do that unless they're trying to keep, you know. Something out. Right. Right. Or keep something in. You do know that my mama, your mama, right, used to cover the mirrors and stop the clocks. I know, I know not to cover mirrors, and I know not to put hats on beds, Miss Miss Palmer. I, I know. So, but but what did you was, see besides the mirror? He had encircled his bed with salt. Oh, he had a haint. You know, you don't. I I will not use that word in public. Of course not. But you know, and I know. There are things in the darkness, sure. But... Well, you want me to look at the body and see what I can get, or you want me to look at his house and see what I can get? I mean, are you are you constitution enough to go look at the body? It's I not have pretty. buried two husbands. It ain't going to be you, the first dead body I've seen. Miss Prudence, if you weren't who you were, I would tell you not to get loud with me. <laughs> if you weren't who you are, Sheriff, I would warn you not to get loud with Granny Prudence. <laughs> George, you are, you are lucky you are a foot taller than me. <laughs> I'm doing this to help you. I understand. Come on. He leads you down to the basement. <clears throat> um past some of the jail cells um, and in the back room you see just this older gentleman mm -hmm. live very frail looking even even for being dead he uh, looks worse than she last saw yeah yeah pencil thin mustache of uh, a three o'clock shadow that was coming that was coming in what was his first name uh, that is Reginald, Reginald Howard Fulton. Okay. Now, Howie, what on earth happened to you? As she walks around and she examines him and sees there ain't a single scratch on him. None. But he looks wasted. She takes out her chicken feather brush from her bag. And she says, now, don't you worry. This ain't going to hurt the body none. And she just starts brushing around his hair and his head, down his neck and his shoulders and his arms. And then over his chest, where his heart is, and down his abdomen, all the way down his legs to his toes. And she is using her cipher. Mm hmm Here we go. To learn something useful or important about this body. Mm hmm Ah. Uh, something important and, it, and yep. useful. And it is a level four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can learn one thing, not two. <laughs> what do you think would be important or useful for Prudence to learn about the body? If his death was caused by supernatural means. It was. All right. And she looks at the chef and says, you's on to something. 
Now she's going to summon a spirit to her and petition it for answers. Oh, shit. Okay. She's going to question the spirits. She will spend... Hang on, with an edge, I have one, so I have to spend one intellect point to do this. Okay. What's your edge yet? One. Yeah. So that means you have to spend, yeah, yeah. One point. Yeah, so you have a two so, point yeah, power. Yeah, and, and that's one. Uh, yep, I call a spirit to me and petition it to answer a few questions, usually no more than three, before the spirit fades. Okay. But I have to summon the spirit. And since it is a spirit of the dead, and I personally know them, yeah. it will be one of my children. Ooh, so you're not even you're not even summoning Howie's spirit. You're summoning an outside spirit. Oh yes, I want somebody okay. that knows something that's going on. Okay. Because uh, while she than... knows Howie, they want that close. Yeah. Yeah, and meanwhile, Georgie is taking his monumental frame and getting as close to the wall as he can because this is weirding him out now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does it look like when Prudence summons the spirit? <sighs> she has a few dolls in her bag. Some are ciphers. They do things, but some are not. One of them is just a little literally tattered rag doll that looks like a bunny. It was a crib doll for one of her children that died as an infant. Yeah, I feel like at this point, George is standing against the wall with his hands on his face. <laughs> and, and and she and and she just he's just gone full ending of Blair Witch at this point. And, and, just <laughs> she's just like <laughs> now, Richard, baby, you come to mama. And she's rubbing the doll. There and, is a moment where. You will. Feel the the doll's arms come to life and grab onto your hand mm -hmm. and you'll hear a soft voice uh, I'm here mama I just says, thank you baby now you know about Hank bothering this here gentleman and she moves the doll so it can see the body uh, yeah, thank, thank you, Mama. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got, he's got the touch. It looked like it to me. Do you know what did it or who did it? He's not a who, Mama. It's a what? That's what. Do you know? I seen it here and there, out, behind, beyond the tracks. It, it's scary out there, Mama. All right, baby, you say you stay safe. You you go on back and rest, okay? Okay. Mama loves you. I'll tell me you say hi. Thank you. And the, the doll goes limp. Mm -hmm. And she puts the doll back in the back. Do you think that his voice was audible to everybody or just her? I think Make they, it everybody. I, I, I think they could hear bits and pieces. Yeah, I feel like as soon as Georgie would have heard the voice, mm -hmm. uh, he would have absolutely done the Blair Witch thing. He would turn around facing the wall and put his hands on his ears. <laughs> uh, I love Georgie. I love Georgie. <laughs> Granny he, he don't, is awful he don't, fond of that young man. <laughs> he don't do magic so well. So, And this nope. is, especially after what he's seen today, mm-mm. Well, that's how she knew that wasn't your, your siblings, because she knows what real Haynes is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Uh, and and there's a moment where uh, I think the quiet really lets Georgie know that things are done. Yeah. Uh, and even even the sheriff is just kind of like he's he's been looking at the situation, but he's also at the same wall with Georgie. Like he has his back to the wall. His hands are kind of like, like crossed in front of him. At just how good Prudence is at this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she Wait, just... Well, all of this is like really weird because Georgie is like, he's, he's uneasy around people, but he's not uneasy around Prudence, even with the spooky shit. Yeah. So it just for proves him, it's like, she's a, she's one of the witches of the woods. Well, like while, yeah. So like while, <laughs> while he's around her, like he's totally fine when she starts doing her thing, but in the end, it's he, he's been raised to to respect the, the you know the the witches in the woods, and that to him, that's what she is. It's just he 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 can't understand what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. and she will actually touch the corpse's hand and say, "I don't think your little trick will work." There is something supernatural hunting. Now, hold on, Miss 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 Palmer. I the, the, we all heard what we heard, and that will not leave the confines of this room. Of course, I, I, I will take that to my grave. One, because nobody will believe me, and two, I don't ever want to see that shit again. <laughs> uh, pardon my French. Well, uh, you wanted my help. I didn't say you'd like it. I understood the bridge I was crossing when I crossed it. Um, what do you mean something supernatural is hunting? My baby said it. It's not a who, it's a what. And it's out I, beyond the tracks. I mean, a bear is a what? Well, yeah, but it ain't a bear. I seen fucking tree-looking creatures taunting Georgian Street. Trying to pose as his dead twin si siblings. Wait, 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 what? And he, he'll look at Georgie. You, you got your hand in the cookie jar too? That's what was, you... that's what was out there, Georgie. It won't your siblings. It's some kind of it. I think, yeah, at that point, Georgie gets like, even more visibly uncomfortable with the situation. So there is something supernatural hunting. I think it's tainted the apples that made the apple butter. We have folks going out to talk to Gertrude who made the butter. Sheriff, this is bigger uh. than y'all laws are going to be up for. I I can't shoot uh, a ghost. No, but if it ain't a g person ghost and it's some kind of supernatural thing that hangs out in the woods out beyond the tracks, then maybe you can shoot that. Can you... I'm going to need some time to wrap my head around this. You take all the time you need. Make yourself a cup of tea. I'm, I'm, I'm going to break out something stronger than tea, I think. Nah, uh, you can take a nip, too. And he, he leads you back <laughs> out to the street. Uh, While well, this is going on, back at the general store, Joe and Rand come in. You got to wait out here, Rand. I can't. Or Actually, I don't know your name, so you got to wait out here, mister. You can't come in the back in the storeroom, but I'll bring, uh, the, I'll bring the crate out. Joe, I would like to speak with the proprietor regarding a refund. I'll get Miss Bursley out. Just wait right here. I'll be right back. Absolutely. Go right ahead. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and grab the crate. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you mm -hmm. know, and then bring uh, the crate yeah. out. And I'll find her while I'm wandering around the place. Bring her out, too. Yeah. Uh, and you see Constance behind the counter. She just looks at you. Man, Mr. Barrow, good to see you again. We're gonna have I to, wish have to, to smash ask. this, Constance. Uh, I gotta take it out back. It's 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 bad. Oh no! I hadn't had I, any yet. I point at the vomit-strewn thoroughfare over in the corner and that has been festooned. Um, 
I I would like to request a refund for the apple butter. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Barrow, we didn't charge you anything for the apple butter. That was, that was a gift. Oh, may I have my my nugget that I gave you back? Well, this is for for the services rendered, Mr. Barrow. This is for the goods for the week. Very well. That I am. I am not having a good morning. Uh, that is what I've I, determined. I apologize that you are not having a good morning. I, I wish I could be more help. I do. You want, do you want I do as well. Brew some tea for you, Mr. Barrow. Would that would that help? Uh, not if it's from the same people that made the apple butter, oh, which it, I not. fear was poisoned. Um, poison? Joe, is apple butter poison? Uh, you know, that's what it looked like. I, you know, we can't win for losing some days, and it looks like... Has has Joe started shattering the apple butter? Like, not yet. Did, I'm waiting for, I gotta wait for her to tell me I can. It's hers, not mine. Yeah. May I? And I look at one of the jars of the apple butter. I mean, if it if it's poison, I wouldn't touch it if I were you. I don't want to touch it. I take the jar and I unscrew the lid. And I just sniff it. Now that I've learned to not trust anything in your game, I'm going to use my class skills that are part of the archetype that I've chosen to start doing investigative work. Is there anything off or strange about the apple butter? Uh, let's see. <laughs> What uh? What skill are you using? Because it doesn't look like you have any skills. I am sharp-eyed, which means I am oh. trained in perception, right? And noticing things. Sure. Okay. Uh. All right. So we'll say it's a difficulty five to start off with. Your skill. Okay. We'll ease it by one to difficulty four. Do you got anything else you want to throw in? I would like mix? to spend one level of effort. Okay. Because uh, I have intellect pool left that has not been killed by my lunch. Yeah. So that'll bring you down so, one more. Yeah. Um, so I'll ease it down to a difficulty of three. So nine or higher. I am not encouraging him. I wouldn't encourage him. I don't, I, don't, I don't need his encouragement to sniff things. I don't know you well enough yet. Yeah, no. You're just some guy. I just now found your name. Yep. Mr. Barrow. That is an 11. 11. And yet I knew his name. Yeah. Um, it doesn't smell off. You smell the crushed apples. You can smell cinnamon. You can smell um, the, the dairy product, the, the, the kind of real thick um, cream of the, of the, 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 the buttermilk uh, butter. Um, this doesn't, it smells delicious. Then I am bereft of ideas. I, I've got nothing. Yeah, I'm going and to... I will sit back with my back against the wall and yeah. pant heavily from my near poisoning to death. Yeah. Constance, Constance kind of gives you a sad look, Joe. Oh, I, I, I don't want to endanger anyone else's lives. So uh, I feel like if you, if you gotta get rid of it, Joe, I trust you. I'll, uh, I think it's best. A couple people already got sick. Georgie, he didn't do too well, and I mean, I don't expect this city slicker over here to, to really be able to handle good apple butter. But you know, Georgie. Yeah, he, he, he could he's, go and he's built like an ox. Yeah, he, he eats like a goat already. It, it, not much makes him sick. So, yeah, I'm going to have to take it out back. Actually, I don't even think we should break it out back. I don't want to leave it. Some of the animals might. Yeah, get it. no, no. Um, could it, would it be too much trouble, Joe, if, uh, if you take it back to, to the Drummonds? I can do that. Okay. I can do that. It's not that heavy. I can. Take the crate, take it back to him. Sure. Uh, I'll take it back once I get back with Miss Prudence. I think I'd like to have Miss Prudence come with me. Uh, just in case there's some sick over there. It could be something that got them too. So that way, if it's something 
something wasn't clean or something, Miss Prudence can take a look at the family. All right. All right. Um also see if uh see if Kitty, uh if Miss Hawthorne over at the general goods and trading post, if she got any of the, the drum and apple butter. I'd hate for them to to also have to deal with uh with this kind of bad case of uh of goods. That would be too much trouble for you, Joe. No, no, it's no trouble. You know, I do whatever you want. That's what I'm here for. Bro, I just I don't want to put you out, Joe. You, I, you but I know that, that the Hawthorns is on the way to, to the Drummonds anyway. So no, you tolerate me working here when a lot of people wouldn't, so it, it's okay. I got it. All right. Thank you, Joe. And she comes over and she grabs her hands. I kind of look at it kind of like I'm not used to contact. Yeah. I don't tell you enough that I appreciate you, Joe, but thank you. You're just doing my, my part, you know? Sure. sure. And I'm terribly sorry she turns her attention to you, to Rand, um, about the day that you're having, Mr. Barrow. Um, no, that's quite all right. Some days you're on top of the world, some days you smell the succulent scent of apples and it ends up being a disappointment. It's not your fault. You didn't make it. I bet he'll never look at apples the same way again. I can tell you that. I wouldn't either. That that drum and apple butter is delicious. But you know it won't stop Georgie. No, no, of course not. Well, Georgie is a big fella. I am. Uh, that man could eat a spade whole. A whole spade. Handle and all. Um, large man. Did you see him at this the, has been Constance, did you see him at the pig roast last time? See him? How do you miss a man like that? I thought we gonna have to put another one on just for him. I, I was about to tell old uh, old Steven to, to to bring a boar next time. That might satiate that boy. Maybe. Yeah, he, mm. but it's okay. I'm going to assume that this is the first time that any shipment of food from them has caused a problem. Oh yeah, no, the Drummonds, the Drummonds have been giving us apple butter going on three years now. Them's good folks. You don't be insulting them. No, no, not insulting. I'm merely trying to figure out whom to uh, request. Uh, some measure of redress from. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother Miss Geraldine about that. Um, Gunther could handle any kind of uh, redress, as you put it. Um, but I'm sure everything will be okay. I'm sure it's just bad batch of apple or maybe bad spices. You know, we get some of them Northerners coming through with selling stuff, and eh, you can't always trust that. Yeah, no, right. northerners are generally very untrustworthy. That's what I've heard, Mr. Barrow, and the present mm -hmm. company excluded. No, I appreciate the exception being granted. Uh, uh, the Barrow family's never done anything wrong by us here in Salem. Well, I'm only a Barrow by association. I don't know my family. I oh. only know my parents. All right. I didn't know that you were... Uh, we're not part of Vernon's crew. I have received a letter from my cousin Vernon, but I do not. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm when I was growing up, we went by my mother's name of Crow. Uh, Barrow was something that I only discovered later on in life upon my parents passing. I see. Well, I, I didn't mean to bring up bad feelings yeah. oh it's nothing you would have known about it's quite all right and again i've almost died from food poisoning this morning a simple matter of not knowing what name to address me by is rather small by comparison don't you think and you're still with us so that's all that really matters indeed georgie is a hell of a nurse he knew exactly where to strike me on my back to cause me to throw up that last bit that could have been catastrophic. He's got big hands, that man. Massive hands. 
That's like probably frying pans one in full made ass, of meat. One of them fool-ass woodsmen probably ate the wrong berries again, and Georgie had to take care of that problem. It happened. I don't it. know, but he's got he's got meat pans for hands. They're awe-inspiring, truly. Um, wow. My ribs still hurt. Let me know as soon as you get back then, Joe, and uh, we'll get to, to doing the rest of the chores for today. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave this right here, uh, Constance. I got to go fetch Miss Prudence first. All right, sure. Just, I'll make sure nobody nobody gets their hands on yeah, this. Yeah, make sure. Hey, I know it's popular, but we we can't risk this. Right, right. right. I'll keep an eye on it. Thank you. Yeah. I'll go find Miss Prudence. Yeah, uh, I you, as the borrow, you're coming with me. Am I now? I uh, recommend uh, you come with me so that you know we can fetch Miss Prudence. I wouldn't want anything bad to happen. If you to want to spend time outside. with me, if if you want to spend time with me, Joe, all you have to do is say so. You don't have to hide behind. You know, I'm just looking out flightless. for your safety. You see, uh, you're new to the ah. town, and outsiders normally the first ones blamed. So. For your safety, you should come with me. Yes, all manner of predators about. I'll what I've happily heard. accompany you. Uh, good day. I appreciate mm -hmm. that, Mr. Burrow. I Take care of yourself, Mr. Burrow. Uh, and by the time that the two of you come back to the courthouse, uh, Prudence and Georgie will be coming out as well. As we're walking, um, I'm going to chalk this up to the fact that I'm lightheaded from food poisoning. Mm. Um, you're a strange fellow, Joe. That's what they say. Very strange. People say a lot of things. You can't always believe what you heard. And what about what we see? <laughs> In this holler? Let me tell you, you can't always believe what you see either. Oh, well, you're right. I once saw not far out of town, matter of fact. Man stood about nine foot tall, but he was wrapped up in vines, the creeping vines. Creeping vine. The, the, they called him the green man. I saw him once outside of town. I still don't believe that. Have you ever seen nine foot tall creeper vine walking around like a man? See? The natives have all sorts of stories of different spirits. When I followed the army, I heard several of them. I've seen some strange things, shadows that move of their own accord. They even had stories of men that could take the form of beasts. Fanciful things, strange tales. And I'm going to lean real close to you. I don't know where you've heard those tales, but those are the kinds of tales you shouldn't repeat in town. Uh, company I'm... around here may not like that, and you're already an outsider. Let's not make things difficult. You want to talk about those sir, fairy I... tales? We should talk about it not in town. I apologize, sir. I'm lightheaded and uh, not terribly well. I thought that you and I had a level of comfort where we could discuss fanciful things that obviously weren't true. Uh, this town been here a while, and like any town, everywhere has eyes and ears. And, well, as Miss Prudence says, uh, gossip's gonna gossip. And we don't need to be scaring people around these parts with talk of people shifting into men and beasts uh, that they're, uh, that cause a panic. We already got a poison to deal with. I, I'm aware. I'm intimately aware of the, the poisoning. Now you yes. said you, uh, you were uh, followed the army around? I'm a reporter. You ever I followed uh, following the war the government needed a new uh, focus for our country and as you know western expansion presented the ultimate opportunity for that the fairy tale that people needed to take their mind off brother versus brother. See. I was assigned to a detachment that was in charge of uh, uh, pioneering the Western expansion. I was supposed to write a piece glorifying what they did whilst they were 
uh, conquering the West. So you've been out West. I have. You there during the Civil War? No, I missed the... I missed it. I came in at the end afterwards. A lot of us. Uh, you can ask some people around, they'll tell you, even those that were there missed it. Or at least some of them. I believe that I have seen quite enough of man's inhumanity to man, regardless of whether it were my brother or not. I'm sure. Now let's go find Miss Prudence. This ain't a place to have heart-to-heart -heart talks about soldier things. That's, that's the kind of thing that upsets some people. Some people around here are still upset how the war ended. So don't talk about fairy stories, don't talk about the war, and don't blame anyone for the poisoned apples. You want to talk about fairy I'm, stories, talk to Miss Prudence. She knows those kind of legends. She knows all about the stuff that goes on. I don't stories. doubt it. Miss Prudence seems to be a very well-informed woman. But a lot of people around here, that's all myth and superstition, you see. And some of them, uh, they don't like it being brought up because that draws the evil eye, at least according to them. Now, the I tell you eye. now, the evil eyes, I don't think it needs you to say his name to watch her. Evil eyes everywhere and sometimes in everybody. So, Are you talking about the devil, Joe? No, no, not the devil. I'm just talking about there's a little bit of evil in everywhere and everyone. You don't want to draw attention right now. Just friendly Please. advice. I appreciate it. As Prudence and Georgie walk out of the courthouse, mm -hmm. she's telling him she's basically he, of course, being the gentleman that he is, offered her his arm to her to escort her out of the courthouse. And she uh, tells him, now, now, Georgie, I'm very sorry if what I did upset you. But know that that's a good one. That was my first baby I lost. It just never... Uh... Seeing that stuff just never gets easier. I understand, but I only call on the good ones. The ones that want to help. Understand that. It's something the Lord has blessed many women of my line with. To be able to call on the help we need. You know I trust you, Granny. And they come down the steps to her cart and see yep. Joe and Rand walking up. Oh, gentlemen, y'all back from the store? Yes, ma'am. Constance wants us to go out to the old drumming place. Ah, well, you want me to I, I offered to have you come with me because uh, if the apple butter's been poisoned or something, or if it's just a bad batch... Uh, there may be some sick people at the house. It's best to have you look at them. That's a good idea, Joe. Um, I let the sheriff know what was going on. And we got to pick up, we got to stop on the way at the store so I can grab we, the apple. We butter. can put it in the cot. We can put it in the cot. Uh, much old obliged. N old Nellie don't walk too fast. So it she'll, you know. I'm much obliged. I'll walk beside the cart. I don't want to take up space on your cot. Uh, so Mr. Barr, you looking a little peaked. You all right? Well, I I had a delicious apple butter for breakfast, and then I feel as if many of my internal organs attempted to follow it as it exited my body at a high rate of speed. So, no, not quite. Uh, Why don't you I, have a seat in the other other side of the cart there? It's a two seat. Oh, no, I, I, I very well. I was going to say I can walk, but when no, I'd much rather not offered, have you complaining the whole way. I'm not complaining at all. I'm, I'm fine. You make yourself comfortable. When he gets in the cart, I'm going to walk behind the cart <laughs> where I can watch him. <laughs> and I'm not going to like glare or anything. Just keep my hair pulled, you know, carry my head kind of down. But you can see my eyes cutting at him through the hair. <laughs> and, uh, she, it, and, and, and Georgie helps her because she's a tiny woman. She's like four foot 11. Okay. Oh, Georgie oh. probably just completely <laughs> just picks her up and sits and her in the car. Yeah, he just like yeah. lifts her up <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and puts her I, in the I car. I do, 
I do need to to go let if I'm if I'm not gonna be able to yeah go I gotta let Ma and Pa know that I I got something else I gotta do today otherwise they're gonna get all why aren't you cutting I, 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 I'm sure we'll be all right Joe will look out for me you go do your work but here hang on and I want to do I need to roll something to craft um. Sure, but we can handle that off camera. Sure. So basically, Prudence is going to take a little old bottle. It's a little like cobalt glass bottle um, mm -hmm. with a cork in it that's empty. And she's going to take it and she's going to take one of the spice bags that she got from the store this morning with some salt. And she's going to pour salt in it. And then she's going to take another little jar out that's got some metal shavings in it. Looks like iron, possibly. And she pours a little bit of the iron in it. And then she just kind of takes it and she holds it real close and she whispers some things that you can't make out. And she hands it to you and says, put this in your pocket. And if you feel like there's something threatening around you, you throw that at it. And then you run. Absolutely, Granny. Thank you. And, she and because I know I'm limited in the number of ciphers I, I have, and I haven't been able to get rid of one of them yet. You've just I'm got going, one, so when you use one, you can get rid of it. Well, <laughs> or I was going to say, because I know Joe used his, mm. can I give you him don't the know, mat? You don't actually know you I know used my granny oh, did. Right. Because she used so, the chicken feather brush. She did. So he'll he'll pull uh, we the bought him. mat. Yeah. <laughs> he, he'll pull um, the, the mad stone yeah. out of his pocket. Okay. Um, and give it to her. So he'll exchange the the one she made for him for that. Oh, now ain't that neat? Thank okay. you, Georgie. It's uh, I haven't found need for it, but if y'all are oh, it's quite special. And look at how when the sun hits it, it reflects. I love that. And she puts it in her bag. <laughs> okay. So you have a mad stone now. I do. I have a mad stone. I, I, and Georgie has a sense danger uh, vial, basically, that's salt and iron to stop something, stun it briefly so he can get away. <laughs> could have just given him a empty, an empty jar, and as strong as he is, he could have thrown it and knocked him probably over at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when yeah. you're dealing with haints and some of them that ain't the normal haints, you want a little extra. You see the size of him? I think he could even hit a haint and knock it off his feet. <laughs> Georgie, you be safe now in them woods, all right? You yes, gonna come with us, Georgie, just in case? We may need your strength to help move some people if, if there's a bunch of I, sick people there. I got no problem coming, but I'm also on my mama and pa got now, so... Uh, you, you take know, care of your family, honey. I, Granny's got this. If I need more help, I'll I'll rustle up my son and some other folks. And if worst case, if something happens when y'all get back, I'll uh, we'll get word to you. I, I'll see to it afterwards. I'm sure worst comes the worst. Mister Bear over there can scream loud enough, uh, you'll hear him. She pats Mr. Bear on the arm and says, now, don't you take that to heart now. He's just teasing you. <laughs> yeah, this is a little friendly banter, you know. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Barrow, don't let this sour you from food. I sure won't. No, I imagine that at some point biology will compel me to continue to consume I'll food. fix you something once um, we check on the, the, the family that made the apple butter, because it ain't far from my farm. Will we be using the same apples that were utilized in the butter? Not at all, dear. Excellent. I'm pleased to hear it. I promise uh, you I had a hearty breakfast this morning with my daughter, and we are just fine. Sure are. <laughs> uh, as the little trio of miscreants goes back to the Williams Barrels house, uh, we're going to follow Georgie as he goes out to the edge of town where his family home is. And we'll see that the door is ajar. There is a beautiful Palomino dark chocolate browns uh, Palomino horse kind of tied off to the side that 
takes stock of Georgie as he comes into his family's yard and unnarrowly stares at Georgie. And there is this dark intelligence in the in the horse's eyes. There is this idea that this is not a beast of burden or a trophy animal. This is a calculating creature of its own accord. And there is this sudden gregarious laughter that comes from your mother inside the house. Uh, and you hear, I simply must thank you for your generosity and i hope that this is quite the business endeavor that we will find ourselves in mr holtzman mrs holtzman i am forever in your debt for agreeing to this and the sharp dressed man that comes out first from your house is someone that you've never seen before there's a banker's suit, shale gray with pitch black pinstripes. The vest uh, is of equal cut and fabric. The white shirt, uh, almost a little dusting of soot that is reminiscent of uh, mining agents, um, touches with the business of the land and the red tie is not garish. It is not uh, boisterous or loud. It is a deep crimson that suits this gentleman Im immaculately well. It is <laughs> such a complimentary color to him. Um, touch paler than normal. Hair is parted in the center, and as much as it looks like he fusses to keep it back, there are these two strands that kind of come down on either side of his eyes. And as he comes out and sees you, and you make eye contact with him, he smiles and he goes, Ah, oh, this must be Georgie. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, my boy. My name is Vernon Barrow. And this is where we're going to come to an end for tonight. So thank you all for letting me tell the beginning of this story. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Oh, shit. Well, fuck. Don't worry. Old Joe can turn into a, a, a bird and fly the fuck away. And I can be sneaky to anyone that's not in my party. Uh, I mean, <laughs> how fucked am I if I just try to punch him? I just want to know. Punch the I mean, horse. Why would you want to punch him? <laughs> you don't know who he is yet. Punch the horse. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I'll if you you he's more scared of the, the horse. horse. <laughs> don't, don't punch that horse. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> And That's don't kill his it. dog. We don't want him going John Wick on us. Yeah, that, that horse will punch you back. <laughs> I mean, look, Georgie may hit like a mule, but I don't think he wants to get kicked by one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweetie, take us out. Yep. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody coming for the first episode of this mini series. We'll be doing this every Thursday for the month. Yeah. So uh, we've got three more episodes. I think three more after this. Four one. more. Four more, three more, I something. Think. I don't know. Let me look at my scheduling here. Nope. Three more after this. Oh, yeah. Three more. Yep. Three okay. more after this. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for coming to that. Uh, please join us on our Discord. This is where uh, Ravnus Archon cast this show from. He put it up in the casting call that, uh, hang on a second. Now that I'm done being old, Joe, let me get my hair out my face. Uh, you know, there you go. Uh, he put up a casting call on the, on the Discord and we applied and I don't know. You know, apparently he wanted to play with us. So, uh, yeah, be on a Discord. We also do hangouts. We got a pretty chill people. Uh, we do hangouts from time to time. 
as you know, we have the spoons for it. We just hang out and zoom with the community. Pretty cool way to do it. Uh, if you want to catch back episodes, pop over to our YouTube. It's right over here. Uh, on the YouTube, you'll see back episodes of all our other streams. And uh, if you miss it live here, you can always pop over to YouTube and catch it over on YouTube because I post it up when my brain isn't mush within a day or two of a stream. Uh, right now, I'm kind of, uh, things have been delayed because I'm in CISSP training. So uh, I've, a lot of things got delayed for that. That's a hell of a training. So, but pop over to our, our YouTube if you want to see some D&D or Call of Cthulhu 5e. All you got to do, go over to Ishvel. So go do that. Uh, check out our friends. Uh, we'll let we'll let people go around and say what they're doing in a little bit here. Uh, we'll come back to that after Mama gives a schedule. You want to get you some Extabber Studios merch? Uh, we've got some merch. Uh, you know, I, I may need to have it make me a T-shirt that says "Old uh, Old Joe's just going to give you friendly advice." Probably with a club in his with a club picture. And Granny's got you. Yeah. So. <laughs> And I'm totally not a bad guy. I want a shirt that says totally not a bad guy on it. You're an outsider. outsider. And until you show me otherwise, outsider. until you show me you otherwise, to I got to treat. Hey, I was an outsider for a little while. I still am in some ways. Cause yeah. Not a I won't tell people I where I'm from. Villain. Prudence does I'm not treat Joe like she treats Georgie. Hey, I won't tell people well, where I'm, I'm from. Georgie's practically a grandson by proxy. Yeah. Meanwhile, Georgie's <laughs> shirt would be, I'll eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it takes a lot to fill up that body, okay? Keep it going, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, you want to support body. the players? So, you know, bits of donations, they go to the players, not to the studio. It's a way for you, the viewers, to give something to the players. Because as you can see, you know, we put effort into this. If you want to give something to the studio, because, you know. I'm wearing a petticoat, y'all. I'm, I'm wearing damn coveralls. You'll never see me in coveralls, except on stream. I shaved I will not my wear. face into an impractical mustache that I have to keep for a month. Gosh, gosh, bagosh. Look, I, uh, I'd like to claim I was growing this for the stream, but I'm not. I'm just, you know, doing something a little different. Very stylish, I might add. Yeah, I'm just like, waiting. Like to, once it gets a little in, longer, I can trim this to match it, it, and it'll be, you know, even. So, uh, but if you want to give something to the studio, Subscribe here on Twitch. Uh, go to Coffee. You can give something to the Coffee. If you're watching on YouTube, you like the video. You subscribe to the channel. Comment on the video. That's free, y'all. That's free, and it drives up uh, well our engagement overall, which means it'll get recommended to more people, which means more people might watch it, which means more engagement. You know, it's a cycle. Cycle. And I know we're doing uh, uh, TTRPG stuff is niche, but hey, every little bit helps. Just so you know. Uh, and now I can turn it over to my wife for the schedule because we got right. a schedule. Yes, we do. So, wow, this is night two of me playing characters. Luckily, tomorrow you're going to get the me without a wig and without stuff going on and the table of Kansas City players live so that we can introduce you to the cast and they can tell you all about their characters and we can talk about the Chronicle and at least a little bit um, before we start up that Chronicle, Kansas City V5 Chronicle called A Domain Divided. That's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. So you'll get to find out. Well, if you're on a Discord, you already know who's in it. Yeah. But you'll get to find out uh, what clan it? they are. What clans? A little bit of their little background. Bit of backstory. Yep. Mm -hmm. Kind of what, you know, what happened and how they got embraced. And, you know, you'll get to find out. You'll get some spoilers for me, probably, maybe. Who knows? Depends Likely. on. Likely. Depends on the state of my brain after the final day of CISSP training. Mm hmm Yeah. And you'll finally get to see the intro because I'm not going to reveal it until after the Q&A starts. Y'all don't even get to see it until the Q&A starts. Forgive me for yawning. It's been hell week at work and I'm exhausted. But today is my Friday. I don't have to work tomorrow. So, yay. Um <laughs> Being as someone that's been drinking a lot of uh, jar water, I can totally understand where you're coming from. <laughs> but yeah, so Saturday there is no stream because Tiss is on break. But until the 14th, until the 14th. But on Sunday, we should have the marathon back for Windy City After Dark. We're resuming with season four, which is where we left off last time. Last weekend, Shanky needed a break. It's been a lot going on with us, a lot of stress and stuff. And he just needed a mental health day instead of working on compiling that 
marathon. So at noon on Sunday, we should be having that going until roughly about 8 to 10 p.m., depending on how many sessions Shanky can get into it. Um, And then, of course, Wednesday, we have at 8 p.m. Eastern, Vampire the Masquerade Dark Ages. It is a hybrid of V5 and V20 that we have done, and it is a it's the Transylvania Chronicle. So join us for that at 8 p.m. Eastern. We are currently hunting a true faith freaking Dark Ages version of Celestial Chorus Mage Inquisitor. Inquisitor. Yeah, good times good times and he's basically immune to fire so you know Elena, and he can step into the deep umbra yeah and elena's preferred method of instant results for problems is nullified at this point so now she's got to go to her backup of burying folks alive yeah look last uh, ep- <laughs> episode we got to talk see mages yeah. You got to see Zelios. I mean, it's a, it was a good episode. Yeah. So you'll join me and Shanky, of course, a storyteller, and Will here as my lovely baby brother, La Sombra. <laughs> I am such a lovable scamp. You are. You're such a troublemaker. Make your big sister proud. <laughs> And then, of course, we'll be back here Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern with the second session of Old Gods of Appalachia. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm pretty sure old Joe's not going to kill Mr. Bearer there. Uh, but it might he look might at him really he hard. And I'm, and I'm also six, I'm 63% sure that I won't kill old Joe. Yeah, well, you can try. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure y'all are not killing each other on Granny Prudence look, watch. I'm not sure that someone this has is tried just before. Gonna but I, I'm, I, I'm pretty confident some people have tried to kill me in the past. I just don't know for sure. He, he don't remember. Just end up with Georgie standing between the two of us with like one hand out on each of our foreheads as we ineffectively swing. No, it'll be a bear. The two. It really will. Well, you'll be a bear and I'll be doing other stuff that has not been revealed yet. In Prudence game, what lives I can do. on a farm. I will put each of you in pens and then protect the pens so that you can't break out of them. That just sounds like a fun Friday night to me. Yeah, I'm game. Yeah. <laughs> Appalachia okay. Thunderdome. Let's do this shit. We can go. We'll have some fun with it. In separate pins. No, I'm not planning to kill him. It's just, you know, <laughs> we've got to establish our position. Un- now, don't until, make me put you on the timeout stool. Until Joe becomes a pig and gets greased up, this isn't a fun game. <laughs> now that you've said it. It's, gonna, it's on my radar. It's going to happen. I also want to thank everyone that was in chat and, and talking about I, like the, the apple butter stuff was great. It led me to make a terrible in-game, terrible in-game decision. Um, <laughs> PMs we've been getting during the game. You guys are fantastic. Thank you. That made this so much more fun. Uh, I, I, good stuff, guys. Thank you. All right. good stuff. So, Just wait till, wait, wait a minute. Wait until old Joe comes up with the, uses a leadership role to say, okay, here's the plan. We're going to grease me up. <laughs> Give me some of that lard, cover me in lard, run Don't it real good. This is the, the plan. finale. We're still yeah, four right, episodes on. away. All right. Yeah, so anyway, Will, tell us what you got going on besides what you do with us. Ooh, uh, I mean, I got my own channel here on Twitch where I do uh, Vampire the Masquerade on Mondays. I alternate uh, Legend of the Five Rings and Werewolf the Wild West on Tuesdays. I Normally, I alternate uh, 7th C on Thursdays, uh, and I do kind of uh, play a lovable rapscallion of uh, La Sombra in a Dark Ages game on Wednesdays over here. And then every so often, I'll toss an idea at you guys, uh, hoping that you'll be like, that's too far. You need to stop. Uh, but every time, it's just like, go ahead and do it. And I'm just like, okay, well, here we go. We are playing vampires in an era where we are known that we exist and we fucking rule. You know what? Do it. Where everyone <laughs> likes to play, I'm a naughty vampire. I'm going to be a naughty vampire god. Yeah. So, you know, go for it. Let's see how it works. Yeah, I just got a ten of, <laughs> I just got a ten of breaks from four. I'm going to be unbearable. <laughs> Dark Ages is hilariously broken when you're going to span 800 years of history. Just say. Yeah, it's really broken. All right. So, so Brad, tell someone where they can see you because they're going to get to see you. Oh, yeah. No, uh, 
tomorrow. Uh, I'll be right here with uh, Mama McStabber and Shanky uh, doing the Q&A for Kansas City. Um, <laughs> outside of that, uh, I have nothing I do. <laughs> Other- you want to tune into the Q&A because you're going to love to hear uh, Brad up there talk about his uh, his clan It'll- and what he ended up embracing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting, uh, for sure. <laughs> Rev Ben, you got anything going on? Yes, I do. Uh, so I play in uh, one of Will's uh, other games. I'm in his L5R game on his channel, where I play a scorpion who believes in the power of friendship. Uh, I You can also find my takes on pro wrestling on what was formerly known as Twitter, but is now known as X. Uh I lurk occasionally around the McStabber Studios forum now that I have uh, I've dived back in. Um, and we missed you. I know. I missed you too. I love you guys. I love everything. <laughs> this is a great night. I'm having such a good time. Um, such a good I time. just yeah, I'm in a I'm in a good space and I love you guys. This was great. Will, thank you for running it. Um, I'm so glad to be in a game where uh it's not just you that's torturing me. It's also some of my friends in the game. So that's a nice change of pace. Uh, cough, shanky cough. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Love it. More of this next week. So, uh, as always, everybody, when we end these streams, I want you to, to take your mental health seriously. I want you to take the mental health of other people seriously. Uh, look, mental health is... First of all, it's health, and but I know it's a touchy subject for a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to discuss it, uh, but it shouldn't be that way. Uh, you need to talk about it. You need to reach out to those around you. You need to make sure those around you are okay. Uh, all it takes is a lifeline, sometimes a friendly voice, uh, someone just to listen. And you can be a voice that gets them off the ledge and, and helps them out. So please reach out to those around you. And if you suffer from mental health issues like most people do. Uh, please uh, reach out to your own support line around you. And I know a lot of people don't feel they have one. And I can understand that. Sometimes it's hard to share stuff like that because you feel it's a little too personal or you're, you're dumping on somebody. Uh, in chats, a list of numbers. You can call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There will be a professional on the end of the line that can help be that lifeline you need. And it's anonymous. And it lets you get what help you need. And if you're not in the U.S., and I know we have a number of non-U.S. viewers, or if you're watching this on YouTube, go to findahelpline.com. You can put in the country you're from, even America, or sorry, even the United States. You can put that in there and find out the support lines in your country to get you the help you need. Because mental health is health, everybody. And uh, we want you to take care of yourself. And now I can turn it over to my lovely wife for whatever she wants to close with. Yep, seriously. As the mind goes, the body goes too. So make sure if you're taking care of yourself that you take care of both, that you take care of that mind and that body. And, you know, don't 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 be drinking Ipecac, okay? Not unless you absolutely need it. But please get your vaccines because literally in a few years, there's some people in this area that we play in right now that's going to die of freaking preventable illnesses. Yeah. Yeah, because there's vaccines for them now. And guess what? People are still dying from preventable illnesses because they refuse to take vaccines. So please get your vaccines. It is now getting into flu season. You need to get your flu shot and get your COVID booster too. Um, And, well, it's funny how the Republicans ousted their speaker and then decided to take the rest of the week off, even though they get paid. I'm just going to say. And they can literally drag this mess out until they're due to vote on the budget again in November. So please make sure you're registered to vote and vote accordingly. I want to take a week off and get paid. Yeah. Especially after this week. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That's your tax taxpayer dollars at work there, y'all. Yeah. Fucking corrupt crooks. The every last one of them. Um, so please. Make sure you register to vote. Vote accordingly. In Ohio, there's an election this year you need to be paying attention to because there are some ballot items that are rather important. That's all I'll say about that. Um, so, yeah. 
said with love. And I do thank everybody for coming. And I thank our game master for tonight, Revner's Archon thank up you there. Thank you so and much, Ravnos. It's good to be playing as a player with all of you because a number of you here, I haven't been really a player much with. So uh, I love it. I get to play with my husband. And I'm not being a total <laughs> asshole to you. <laughs> not yet. Not to you. No, I would not be to Miss Prudence. That'd be a no. I'll, I'll, that'd be, I'll that'd be the be... lightning rod for that yeah, one. Yeah, no, I'm, you I'm don't. You don't it. want her to curse you. I don't want. I, <laughs> no, I, I, you, Georgie and Prudence have been in the town too long. Uh, to uh, I'm an outsider to you two compared to the mm. the way it is. So now you two, I can't be mean to y'all. <laughs> Luckily, I have plenty of self-esteem, and I don't need your approval to love myself. <laughs> and love yourself often. But seriously, <laughs> everyone, thank you so much, and have a good night. Good night, everybody. I got to go get Bye some guys. Food.